It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Renee Ritchie's back. Andy Anako's here. So is Alex Lindsay. And of course, we're going to be talking about the new M1 Max and Pro. In fact, Renee's got an M1 Max 14 inch laptop. He'll give us his thoughts, his reviews. We'll talk about the detailed information from a non tech about the system on a chip and why I'm not so sad that I got a small M1 Pro instead of the Max. Turns out it wasn't such a bad choice after all. We'll take a look at M uh, Mac OS Monterey, which comes out this week. Actually, uh, I think today, right? And iOS 15.1. Man, it's a jam-packed show. Coming up next for you, Mac Break Weekly is next. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 789, recorded Tuesday, October 26th, 2021. The Knitters of Newfoundland. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Melissa. The U.S. Postal Service processes more than 98,000 address changes daily. Is your customer contact data up to date? Try Melissa's APIs in the developer portal. It's easy to log on, sign up, and start playing in the API sandbox 24-7. Get started today with 1,000 records cleaned free at melissa.com slash twit. And by AT&T Active Armor. We rely so much on our phones these days and are always on them, whether it's live streaming content, catching up with family on weekly video calls, or watching your favorite podcast. There's no room for fraud calls. Thankfully, AT&T makes customer security a priority, helping block those pesky calls. It's not complicated. AT&T Active Armor, 24-7 proactive network security and fraud call blocking to help stop threats at no extra charge. Compatible device and service required. Visit att.com slash active armor for details. And by Cashfly. Give your users the seamless online experience they want. Power your site or app with Cashfly's CDN and be 30% faster than the competition. Learn more at twit.cashfly.com. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show we cover the latest news from Apple and, oh boy, this is going to be a jam-packed day. Rene Ritchie is back from his mysterious briefings or something. Hello, oh, Rene. I brought toys. No By the way, Rene is not named toys. Christina Warren. We're going to see your toys in a second. We're going to have to fix that. But John, I wish. John, <laughs> I wish. Thanks to Christina for filling in for you, by the way. It was nice to have her. Were you, if I could be uh, as smart as her on her worst day, I'd be happy. Did you have to leave town to get those toys or... No, no. Luckily, uh, they figured out international. They they know how to do it even now. In this huh? weird age. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so good. Do you have all the toys? I yeah. Well, I got the AirPods, and I've got the. Um, I, we're not even going to mention the, the AirPods today. So. Too put, busy. We're too busy, those, Leo. Put those somewhere. Where the sun don't shine. And you got a fourteen and a sixteen. Just the fourteen. Just, Just the, the fourteen. 14. Okay. Well, I can't wait yes. to talk about that. Uh, the reason it's a big day is not only are those starting to arrive, uh, we also now have all the reviews, including a non-text breakdown on the SOC, but we also have Mac oh OS Monterey, which came yesterday, and iOS 15.1, which came. So we got a lot to talk about. Andy Naco, Andy Can I just say, Leo, really quickly, yes. really quickly, we had embargoes for the Mac Pro, for the MacBook Pro, for the AirPods, for Monterey, for iOS, and Pixel Phone, and they released a Sony camera. I, I don't want to hear anybody say about a slow uh, news day Crazy. Again. I know. Cray cray. Andy Anako's here. Hello, Andrew. Hello. Did you get your Pixel? Uh, it is on its way. It will probably arrive, unfortunately, like during the 48 hours that I'm out of the house, but it'll do. Yeah, mine's going to arrive during the seven days I'm out of the house, which is bummer. Oh, but yeah. I think Jason Howell is letting me take his Pixel 6 Pro to Mexico because I'm leaving tomorrow morning bright and early. So if I can bring it, that'll be a great chance to uh, test it out. <sighs> yeah. It, 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 we, we're, we, this is probably the only time we'll talk about it, but the, re the reviews are are very very reassuring to someone who pre-ordered one. Yeah. Uh, but but it fall, but it fall, falls in line with what was expected, given how much we knew yeah. about it beforehand. It's yeah. pretty exciting. Yes. I will. Uh, I do not have a 13, but Lisa has a 13 Pro Max, so I will endeavor to get her to take pictures of exactly the same things. <laughs> <laughs> so we can. You're, you're, nice. ju you're just going to have to make a day trip back to Mexico just to do the comparison <laughs> photos, you know? The well, consensus seems to be the Pixel wins photography, the iPhone still wins video, and but there's a mashup in between all of that. That sounds about right. Every, everybody gets a great phone. That's that's the. Yeah, that's I what I and I think 
when you look at the images, Wall Street Journal had a piece where they compared images from the Pixel 6 Pro, the Samsung S21 Ultra, and the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And particularly, they were looking at skin tones pe with people of color. And I have to say, they, they were different. There's no question. Uh, I don't know which was better because, unfortunately, I don't know the people. So I don't know which was more accurate. Uh, but they asked yeah. the people, which do you like? And, the, you know, the results were varied, as one might expect. But all three looked great. And I, I think that's the point. They all are doing a good yep. job now. We're at the point where we're fighting between Nikon, Canon, and Sony again. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> I think Canon might have won this round, but I'll, I don't know. We'll have to <laughs> defer to people like Alex Lindsay of OfficeHours.Global. Hello, hello. Oh, and I know dot .media. You're it's a, good to be here. You're a black magic guy, probably. You don't care about any of this Sony, Canon, Nikon stuff. I'm really interested in the R5, I have to admit, uh, because of the new lens. Yeah. The new the new lens, the the, the, the dual 180 has mm -hmm. me like, oh, yes. like I just, I, it's, it's finally put all the things, the, for those of us who have been doing some version of 180 or stereo or something, you know, for a long time, kind of the holy grail was can we just have an slr style whatever that puts two two of those lenses together and and oof. Oof. so i'm i'm very oof. close to that and, and i also you know we've done a lot of when we do photogrammetry my choices are actually the sony so i do a lot of you know when we shoot okay. photogrammetry with the car for the re resolution um, i have i have an icon but i don't use it very much anymore yeah so laptops are arriving a number of people in our uh, discord have said theirs has come uh, John was telling me they're in the stores, so some people are canceling their order and go, running to the store. Uh, we, uh, By the way, usually that's a that's a morning thing to do. Like right when the store opens, it appears that so oftentimes there's a couple of things that are sold out all the time. You know that that are in the stores, or a lot of the stores get them in certain days, and so um, that's some that's an experience. Do we know if that's found. the case this time? Do we know what the what the oh. status is in the stores? I'll have to look at. It varies by Twitter. store, but they seem to have all the. The stock options right now going up to I think four terabyte. If you want like high capacity anything, built order options, you still have to order. But if you want any of the base units, they're all there. Okay, we have a maxed out sixteen. The only thing I didn't max was the hard drive, but we have a maxed. Out, I think I put a two terabyte <laughs> in it instead of an eight. Eight. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, yeah. You just shouldn't. You shouldn't put eight on a. But my old thing is you shouldn't put eight on your laptop. I mean, there's so much data on your laptop to lose. You know, if you lose your laptop, I ordered just, eight. Just, did you order eight? Really? So much, so much. I have drive. to because you don't I, have I, I, to. But see, like I only, <laughs> no, I only keep. No I don't want to use external, but like I take it off fast too. I just don't want to edit with things hanging off my computer yeah, yeah. ever. So the, if mm -hmm. I can have like a two days or three days worth of really big projects on there, I'm super right. happy, and I'll take them off as soon as I'm done. And we have, you yeah. know, in the past it's been thanks to Thunderbolt that external drives are pretty much as fast as internal drives. That's not the case mm -hmm. on yeah. these because no, they have true. such huge bandwidths. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you really do want to use the old RAM. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, you want. Yeah, it's I'm as fast as RAM used to be. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. St we're still. The, the jury's still a little bit out on what the longevity of integrated memories, integrated storage is going to be. Because that's the that's the only thing that wor still worries me about this SOC procedure. That now you have a lot of things that could go wrong, and now you really do have to replace an entire motherboard to fix what used to be basic things. But at least now uh, we. Uh, a generation ago, it used to be well. Thank you for not for not allowing me to be able to replace my SSD internally when it goes when it when it breaks on me. And I've had a, a computer go south simply because the SSD went south. Uh, but at least now you actually get a performance enhancement by the fact that it's all integrated. So, so at, least, at least there's a benefit to the consumer. Renee, you fully maxed the sixteen. Like you got the six thousand yeah. dollar. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean that's American. I had to pay for it in Canadian dollars. Oh so, yeah, I mean, that so it's eighteen thousand dollars. So you got six. I only buy. I only buy them every few years. I don't no. do it often. Yeah. This is yeah. this is so attractive. Although, I have to say, I'm starting to feel like since effectively Apple doubled performance in many areas over the M1 one year ago, that we might be able to see this kind of doubling every year for a little while. This but, might be. You know, so, we might be tricky. going back it's, to that thing where we. You kind of want a new laptop every year. <laughs> well, no, because this is really tricky. Like the stuff they did. Well, first, like to to Andy's earlier point, the way they designed this is super interesting. They are massive, massive SOCs, but they have a lot of redundancy because they basically engineered it so that if something goes wrong with like there's like two two of the neural engine blocks, so if something goes wrong with one of them on a Max chip, they just ship that as a Pro. You know, and if something goes wrong with some yeah. of the GPUs, that's a 24 GPU. Like the way that they built the the uh, the chop it's, block. What they on call this what they is call really clever. What they call binning. Right, they're yes. in effect testing, at a, at a, 
making all Maxes, testing them, and then shipping them, whether they're Pro or Max. This is a long-standing tradition. Intel always does this, too. Because when the chip gets that big, uh, defects multiply, yep. obviously. the more 57 billion transistors big Jeez. in this case, which is like bigger than an Ampere, uh, like a, a NVIDIA Ampere in terms of transistors. So, yeah, well, yeah, I, so but I don't think it's going to change it because one of the things here is, we. this is based on the A14 still, like the A14, the M1, and the M1 Pro and Max are all the same generation architecture. So these are Ice Storm efficiency cores, Firestorm uh, performance cores, G13 graphics cores. The, the big changes here is how well they've made them scale. Like they scale almost linearly thanks to like the fabrics and everything that they're using in there. But the other part of this is the engines that they've added to it. Like a lot of the big improvement gains, it's so ridiculous. It's basically a little Mac Pro that they've managed to put into a MacBook Pro, but that's because they have an, ex a, a, an afterburner card, literally an afterburner card. On the Macs, they've got four of those right on the, the die, and that took my, my ProRes renders down from like 25, 30 minutes to three to five minutes. Is that which is, due like, to throughput, IO throughput from the uh, SSDs or the RAM or both? It's, it's everything. Usually ProRes is CPU bound. Yeah. And like this is being offset, like it's being set to dedicated render blocks. And the same thing with other like audio signals, H.264, HEVC, all of that is being done off the main cores. And then you have so many of the GPU cores. And A15 isn't that much faster. The efficiency cores are 30% faster, but the, the main cores, the performance cores aren't. They're just cooler. So if anything, I think Apple is playing around a lot more with the off core um, feature sets on these chips. And we should see steady progress over the next few years. Like I th I, we, we might see a lot more dedicated stuff, but I think we'll see steady progress. So the idea of uh, this doubling occurring every year, you don't don't count on that. We should. I'm going to explain I, a little I, bit. Uh, Renee, Renee is as sped sorry. up as his MacBook is sped up. <laughs> he is also. I apologize. Doubled. I've been he's, living this for a week. He's so <laughs> excited, and you're full of knowledge, and we want to get every drip of it out. So, but I but I think it's important to underline something you said, which is interesting. Uh, and this is confirmed, by the way, Anontech did a very good, uh, their usual excellent analysis of, uh, of what these SOCs are. And they also pointed out the, 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 the CPU instructions, the core, the way the performance cores and the efficiency cores work is essentially the same. That most of the gains here are, as you said, from ex things external to the CPU. Is that fair to say? Yeah, the, the, the mix is slightly different. On M1, you have four efficiency cores, four performance cores. On this one, you have two and six or two and eight on the on the 10 core version. And the thing I love about Anantec is Andre is not, like he's the opposite of an Apple fan. He is way happier with Samsung and, and PCs and things like that, but he's really good at his job. And in his conclusion, he says like, this is, undreamt of performance for a laptop you'd expect this from server hardware yeah which is i think like most enthusiastic that's, i've ever heard on that's, about a, an yeah, Apple that's a good simple sentence to summarize all this yeah. this is always my problem it's my same problem with the pixel uh, 6 and the and the max is a lot of the blogs are fan blogs and so they're you know they're a little less trustworthy and then then there seems to be with the verge and some of the other big ones the necessity to find flaws, like we can't just give it a, say this is great. So I yeah. kind of throw those out too. Um, right. But what I really like, and I and, and I turned to, I was so glad Anantech came out with their uh, yeah. report so quickly, is just, you know, let's get down to the numbers. Let's get into the nitty gritty, how it works. Apple does not completely explain how it works. Uh, some of what Anantech, what Andre uh, does is look at pictures, believe it or not, of the cores yeah. to yeah. kind of understand what's going on. So... Um, it, this is this is uh, still a work in progress, but uh, you also got yes. briefings from uh, Apple, so you you you've got the Apple yes. side of the well, story too. And we have to remember that this chip was probably designed three or four years ago, and so you know I, I still don't think that they would release chips that they couldn't maintain the pace for at least three to five years. You know, like I think that they. That, that what we see it here, I don't know. It feels like they are titrating it, doesn't it? Like they did yeah. the last a year ago, they did low end which was mm -hmm. essentially yes. what we'd already seen in the iPhone and the iPad. Slight, right. slight difference. Now we're doing the laptop. So they're still focusing on total power consumption. Uh, yeah. but, but they did, a, I thought they went a lot farther than I expected. They Look at all the GPU cores, for instance, on the Macs. Right. Yes. So they kind of flexed a little there. But I think there is another shoe to drop. And you correct me, anybody yeah. who thinks this is different, and especially Renee, because you're informed by Apple. 
I feel like there is something else we're going to see when we get to desktops. When you don't have to worry about the total, the TPU, when you can kind of say, let's see what we can do when we got fans and power supplies. <laughs> and well, you saw Mark's report, right? 40 CPUs and 128 GPUs for the next month. That's Mac the Pro. rumor. And that sounds right to me. In other words, it sounds like yes. Apple is not. And again, it's probably going to still be the M1, you know, pr processors, right? But M1 they, Extreme? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? Maybe it is Glad Extreme. <laughs> uh, because, uh, and this will be for the, and I was a little disappointed we didn't see a new Mac Mini, but I guess now I understand laptops, desktops are coming, Mac Mini, iMac Pro, 32-inch, and of course the Mac Pro. And and again, remember that they're sharing the memory, <laughs> which is a big deal yeah. when you're when you're putting that kind of memory into it because you're you're looking at you know v, a VRAM of you know eight gigabytes or sixteen gigabytes on on a lot of these cards, and now you have the the GPU having GPUs having access to all of it. You know if if they, all if they of need it, it's it. not used by anything by else. the CPU. But if you have a yeah, sixty-four so, gig Mac, suddenly you effectively yeah. have a graphics card with sixty-four gig of yeah. VRAM. Exactly. Exactly, That's and, and this is, and again, <laughs> this is the first, you know, this is the first couple of tries, you right. know, and so the thing, and and so while that that kind of uh, return has is starting to be harder and harder and harder for even Nvidia and others to do it. Nvidia is going to have a faster card coming out soon, um, you know, that then that you know, and it'll push forward past this a little bit. But remember that they're there's more work on their end to keep on moving that at that pace where this is at the beginning of the hockey stick rather than the end of the hockey stick. And so I think that there's the, that Apple has a lot of opportunity to, to keep moving down this path pretty radically. Kind of my thinking too. Uh, they really, fl they flexed with this one. They said, you yeah. ain't seen nothing. Uh, well, you know, we, well, the, the scary like, version, the scary unplugged. version, <laughs> yeah. scary version is they didn't flex. Like this is just they, just they, beginning. <laughs> this wasn't. This wasn't. This, this was just. This was just a, an incremental step for them. I mean, that's the scary. It doesn't feel most incremental the when you're doubling. It doesn't. But you're but if they if they if they can keep on adding those processes, remember the and we want to go back to the uh, the investor call where they said you know we're still dealing with legacy components. Anyone starts saying legacy, they start languaging legacy. It means that the 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 chip is the is not the only thing they're about to keep on you know, updating, you know, so, you know, the rest of the machine is still has a lot of external components and they can start to, they can continue to increase efficiencies, you know, there by taking over some of those things and internalizing them. That's kind of what some have said is that it, Apple is now a silicon company that, yeah. that this is really where they're showing some kind of impressive expertise. They are a whole product company. They want to do silicon. They want to do it all. Software. They want to do hardware. Yeah. They want to make the product yeah. that they want to make without the constraints of other of dependencies. Right. The other thing is, I you know, when I ordered, I ordered a maxed out one, not as maxed as yours, Renee, but close. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> uh, and actually, Anthony Nielsen, our, our head editor, is going to get that because he does a lot of motion graphics and stuff for us. Um, but we'll test it first. That's coming in a week. But I also, in order, at first it was just so I'd get it before I left. So today I'm getting the base model 14 inch because that one was the only one I could, yeah. you know, all the BTOs were, were out a week or two. Um, but now I'm thinking I might keep this one and it might be just enough because it strikes me, correct me if I'm wrong, the real difference between the M1 Pro, and this kind of is what, Anon, what Andre says at Anontech too, and the M1 Max is all about GPU. Yeah, you will, GPU and those media units. So like if you're doing anything with ProRes, so they basically doubled the media renderers in the Max version and they doubled the RAM and they doubled the GPU. And if you get the 16 inch Max, uh, very un Apple like, they have a high power mode where if you flip that, they just turn the fans up, let the temperature get higher for combined CPU, GPU uh, sustained loads. So, like, so these really, are, these they are, really want to show off their thermal envelopes. This is for people like you and Alex, where you're rendering ProRes. Uh, I mean, the numbers that, that Renee just put out had me go, I might have to buy one just, just to yeah. do work. You know, like, like I just, not just me, like, even like, though I don't. Everybody's getting those numbers. I know, but I know, at the same I know. It's, time, just, it's just that m the next mini. And the next Mac Pro and the next well, iMac might be yeah. worth I'm just waiting to for. As that's not a f more than Absolutely. a few months off, right? Alex can that's buy what both, I'm, Leo. What? I'm trying to hang on. To, I'm trying to hang on and not Alex buy the laptop buy and just wait for the mini. I can't, though. I mean, <laughs> you have six months of laptop, Alex. I have so many. I have so many computers right now. And so, so I just, I, I, have people I feel asking like me for photogrammetry tests from you, Alex. They already asked, where's Alex's photogrammetry test coming out? Well, Alex oh, is going to send I, I can, us, I can provide uh, that. Uh, you're going to send us something, right? To, to, to max out yeah. the 16. Yeah, I got to find somewhere to put it. It's a lot of data. 
Oh. So if I if I make it public, no, I just I I can put it somewhere for you guys to download it, but and just, I can or mail me a USB key or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the uh, mail me a hard drive. Right. Yeah. So it's 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 a that's it's, the it's, only it's thing I, I I cry a little tear about is I only because it's the base model got five twelve gigs of uh, storage, which is kind yeah. of pathetic, but. I'm not going to be doing all of the things I would want the 16 or the Max 4. By the way, you can max out a 14, which is also really cool, right? Yes, I love that. You can't turn on that high performance mode. Is that the only difference? But yeah, the thermal envelope's not big enough for it yeah. on the 14, but like that's gravy at this point, like with right. the performance you're getting from the Max. Anyway. So, so you're getting a 14 desktop replacement that is just, and with battery life up the wazoo. You're, you, have you had it long enough to really confirm Apple's battery life? Yeah, so I mean, the battery life that they give you, the the number, the twenty one hours, that's if you're watching, just sitting uh, there like, watching it, video, yeah. streaming yeah. video, which is handled by is handled off core by those uh, encode decode engines too. So that's highly optimal. But like my in my stress test, I basically took my iPhone review, which is nineteen minutes of mixed footage. It's got ten bit a, uh, XF AVC. It's got uh, Dolby Vision iPhone footage. It's got some eight K Canon in it. Just a bunch of gnarly codecs, um, and I output it to H.264, and I output it to ProRes. And it's it's it was just draw dropping at first because of the numbers. Like it was just four times faster, I think, with H.264. Then with ProRes, it was ten times faster, like literally ten times faster. But the battery life on the Intel Max, I tested 14 and 16 Intel uh, and the 14 M1 and then the 14 M1 Max. The Intel boxes went down, they lost 75% battery life. They went down to 25% battery life, finishing all those renders. The M1 MacBook Pro from last year was down to 80%, and the M1 Max uh, from this year was down to 90%, just because the ProRes was so fast on it. So how many hours, if you're really working on that load, you're thinking maybe um, six, seven? Five, five, six hours. Okay. Yeah, but that, again, like, I'm, not, I'm never going to be rendering like, for that yeah, long. Yeah, that's, so that's be working it really hard. I'd be afraid of it so I figure breaking. like six hours, <laughs> six to eight hours of okay. normal. Like, and that's full speed use, too, because like the... the com PC laptops, famously, if you have a big GPU in it, when you unplug them, they go down to one quarter power. So, like, you you, you can't even race to sleep and, on them. And for the work a lot of other people do, like me, I'm encoding and things like that. I think, honestly, the Pro is fine. Uh, yeah. You know, you don't need it unless you're doing that kind of graphics work or, or video rendering or video playback, that kind of thing, right? That's kind of my general is silly impression. too. 3D. Yeah. I got to see Octane and Cinema 4D uh, tests. Like the, the, and it sounds so dumb. Um, I likened this to the, when the, when the wedge-shaped MacBook Air came out, when it redefined what your expectations were from an ultra portable. This to me is redefining what my expectations are from a pro laptop because it's, it's literally doing what it took a, a medium to high-end Mac Pro to do just two years ago. But like you see a lot of, like I was watching Tyler Stallman's video and he's doing seven streams of 8K with a really bad, I think, R5 codec. I mean, bad by like the gnarly codec while he's editing in Lightroom, while he's oh, running please. like a bunch of other applications. <laughs> and it's the the playback is going, not skipping a frame. Yeah. Um, and you like you just you see nobody's like, gonna put do everything that, on though. Octane. So it's nice. It's impressive, but on, honestly nobody's gonna do that. But it, it, you but you you couldn't do that. The point is that you couldn't do that couldn't on a laptop before you had yeah. to do that on a Mac yeah. Pro. Um, and people putting everything on an Octane and spinning it around in real time and you forget what real time is like until it's suddenly given back to you. And then you look and, at it and it's a laptop and it's like I can work anywhere now. And a lot of the stuff, I mean, one of the things we're seeing a lot of performance on is USDZ as well, which is something I'm spending a lot of time using right now. And, and that makes a big difference as you look at where Apple's going in the future and being able to open a really high-end model in preview. Like literally, I'm opening this in Apple's preview. I just double-click on the model and boom, it's open. <laughs> you know, and I'm able to rotate it around and look at it. And, uh, and, it's, and it looks, it's photo real. And, it's, it's, and, it, and you definitely see the performance change when you switch over to the, to the M1s, even the little M1s that I have. So let's step back a little bit. And uh, since you've got one in hand, Renee, talk about the uh, it's the weight, the the size, the appearance. Um, Gruber said it feels kind of retro, like a like a titanium. It is so retro. Yeah, it's like a power book. It's like a love letter to power <laughs> books. It's got that whole vibe about it, and it's even got like this little artistic statement on the back. They etch. Says, you can see they etch it in row. instead of. Yeah. They also took the labeling off on the screen, which is great. So it's just etched into the bottom now that says MacBook Pro. They took away the, yeah, and they gave you a notch, which like you, you, it's kind of like in your face, but you stop noticing it after a few minutes too. Uh, but the screen is, if you've seen the iPad Pro screen, the screen is ridiculously good too. It, it's like full HDR, really bright, really vibrant. I'm, I'm, I, I keep forgetting to be uh, irate about the notch. I'm sorry. 
Uh, <laughs> I, guess, I think what happens is just forget about the notch after a while and, and live with it. The menu bar takes yeah. the menu bar leaves your screen and goes into the notch, and you have like a normal sized MacBook screen without having the menu bar. Honestly, on it, really nice. You know, the stuff I work with full screen, like Emacs, probably I'll see the notch because it's kind of there. I'm using it full screen, <laughs> but I would gladly trade the notch for full size function keys and an escape key that I can actually. <laughs> well, hit. also when you go full screen, you don't see the notch because it blacks out the top. The top is out of the 16 by nine yeah, but uh, window for full some screen. Some programs apps. put stuff kind of in the middle there, like oh that. maybe yeah yeah. It's all right. Yeah. I, I'm, I'll survive. I'm not, we'll get over it. I'll get over I just it. I wish you could pin notes under the notch. Like, just let us pin our little notes under the notch. Then it'd be like a like a, a, a bulletin board. It'd be great. Do you notice that it's a little heavier? What is it, a half a pound heavier? Yeah. Yeah, it's like going back from Baby Yoda to full-size Yoda, like we used to have in 20, 2015 and previously. Um, but like at the 16-inch also, it's like four and a half, four point something pounds, uh, which is not insignificant. But I think like that's where you should differentiate. Uh, Apple's, one of the biggest issues with the previous Pros is that Apple tried to make them like like MacBook Pro Airs, um, which a lot of new generation, you know, I'm flying everywhere. I'm a founder. I'm a coder. I'm going to want to use this thing on a Boeing 747. They love that. They bought those in droves. But the people who were traditional Pros are like, no, no, no. That's a MacBook Air. I need an actual MacBook Pro, and that's that's what Apple's doing back here. You know, they're not making the Mac Pro have to be a, MacBook Pro have to be an Air anymore. Yeah, how's the sound? How's the music? It's be like the the 16 inch MacBook Pro Intel model from 2019 was ridiculously good for a laptop. Like I think industry leading still to this day. And this is just a little bit better. Like they've just made every component a little bit better in it. So it's like a little bit wider, a little bit more vibrant, a little bit better bass, a little brighter. Um, I was just I was watching just like as a demo. Uh, when Georgia came in, is that that a laptop? She thought I was watching it on the TV surround system because it really is loud and it really sounds. I was watching the Eternals trailer because I'm into that sort of thing and it it sounds like you'll be you'd be fooled. Uh, if you didn't know that it was a laptop. Dwindle has, as we've been talking, received his 16-inch and is opening it and booting it. And I'm watching him in, in our chat room <laughs> slowly go through the steps. He says, oh, I can't wait to try the speakers. He's waiting for Mac OS update to finish. You have an OS update uh, immediately, huh? You already have, it comes with yeah. Monterey, but... And I think uh, Final Cut updated some of the some of the okay. uh, components as well. Maybe Xcode too. When it started. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else? I'll ask. Uh, our there was Discord some controversy with the anything. HDMI and the SD cards because the HDMI is HDMI 2.0, not 2.1, and the SD card is uh, UHS 2, not 3. Two and when you is look at the schematics, though, is, are, like, uh, uh, two is pretty fast, right? Yeah, except some people are like, this is a Mac. It's, it's got to have the best of everything. But when you look at the schematic, it's got three Thunderbolt buses now, three USB buses up from two previously, and there's just no bandwidth left. Like They'd have to add another bus to get bandwidth to make. Uh, and there's the benefits are, are uncertain because HDMI 2.1 is great, but it's like 8K, 120 hertz, uh, you know, variable rate HDR, great, and you're not outputting that. Like Apple, like the Mac can't output that right now, so it's a bit of a, a bit of a balancing act. I, yeah, I, I, I thought I did think it was odd that we didn't get 2.1. <laughs> that was that was a little bit of a. They just didn't have the know. bandwidth for it. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah double, no, that's what I figured. Uh, HDMI 2.0. Yeah, yeah. What's the speed difference? Couple hundred meg megabytes it's a second. A lot. Uh, it's, it's a lot. It is, no, no, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. Okay. It's it's I think it's second. double, but I don't want to say that for yeah, sure. It's, yeah, it's 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 a lot. It's a lot of more overhead, you know, for that. Absolutely. This just in: Dune Part Two has been greenlit. Okay. Moving Thank on. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was that happened two or three weeks ago. Um, maybe just just no, now. twenty-two minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, they were, well, everyone reported. was nervous. Like, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you was, have the second one? Great when you made the first uh, one. Just, I mean, we're going to break anyway. So I'll because we have much more to talk about. But I, <laughs> since that came in, I thought I better men mention it. Fantastic movie, but it ends in okay, the middle. Good. And it and does. It, it was like, like there, there's not. It's not like we did one and then we think we're gonna do it. I mean, it was. It was really like not to do it. And they had not yet like, greenlit okay, in the middle. It. Yeah, it was like. Yeah. yeah. Because normally, as they did with Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, you would shoot all of it. You've got the sets. You've yes. got the actors. I'm a little nervous now. They got to reassemble all the actors and and get back to work. Well, Jason Momoa have yeah. this new Aquaman body. We don't know now. We don't know now. Yeah. Was it good though, Leo? Just, Will I be happy because I've not I'm, seen I'm, it. Doing every year, I, I was going to watch this weekend, but I had like four embargoes. Yeah, my reaction, and I'll let you guys talk uh, and and contradict me if you want. But best movie I've seen in a long time, probably the movie of the year, uh, and absolutely uh, what Dune deserves. 
drawbacks, of course, it's two and a half hours. So even though he only did the first half of the novel, there's a lot of stuff left out. Shout out Mapes has one line. I mean, there's a lot of things that oh, wow. you never meet the spacers, the space guild yet. That's why we, like they have to do a second one. I got to see <laughs> what they do with the, with the space guild. Um, so there's the so there's some weird missing stuff. But everything that they do is very much in the spirit of, and I thought very uh, beautifully rendered. Awesome. I thought it was very, very good. You guys, I'm still, I'm still trying to rehabilitate after having seen Dune, like in the original theaters, like back as a kid. It was, it David was the Lynch? only, I yeah. I mean, I, it was. I, I, I swear to God, it was the only movie I've ever walked out on. It was so bad. It was just nothing but, you know, <laughs> nothing but. <sighs> But then, the spice. Oh, it's terrible. The spice, yeah. and then like just it's campy, do something campy uh, and and popular for that reason, because uh, it's David Lynch. But no, this is the real thing, and I think I you will not be disappointed, now, Andy. Can, can, I, can I ask you one question? Does it does it feel like you've seen an entire movie? The, the thing that really scares me about your comment is that if I spend money, whether pay per view or uh, or in the theater. Give me a movie with a beginning and a middle and an end, even if it's just the first no, chapter of something. Don't just simply I mean, say you fall off. A cliff. Say, I'm done. I'm out. I, would, I don't want to support. I would that. say I'm out. I would say I would say it's. I wouldn't say. I would say it's similar to End of Empire. Empire Strikes Back. You know, like we knew that there was going to be another one. <laughs> like like at, the, no, at the end of it. I mean, Han Solo is in but, Carbonite. Yeah. You know, but, so but you know, so I think but that, you know what I mean. I'm yeah, sorry, I, go ahead. I felt. Uh, I, it was the best movie I've seen in a long time. Me too. Like it's good. Just Thank really, you. Just incredibly well done. I mean, just in, you know just what's an amazing, amazing movie. is Hans Zimmer's soundtrack. Yeah, you got to see it with whole. good sound. It is. Oh, good. It is. I, I have a seven. Fundamentally amazing. I have a seven one, and just they really used it up. You know, like and they and they made a lot of great choices. And and the only thing, my only complaint about it, we were talking about it earlier in office hours, is that I do think that they there's this there's a style now of mixing the the dialogue into the into the sound, uh, you know, like down into the sound. And there are definitely points where as, you know, as a family who hasn't read the books, <laughs> um, uh, we couldn't understand what they were saying, you know? And, yeah, and so and a lot so, of people have said that I listen on stereo speakers <laughs> Yeah, so and I could hear everything. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so, and I don't know whether it's the, it's the surround mix or, or how it's, yeah. you know, I'm one of the this few people that common. knows that I know that my my system is I have my own channel checkers so I'm I know sure that my system is accurate I'm sure <laughs> so you're uh, no I'm sure you're Lucas I roll film, my own uh, standard yeah. yeah so so um so I'm pretty sure that my my system is doing what it's supposed to but it was just really hard to hear some of the dialogue and so we ended up turning the there were a couple of places where we were like okay we got to go back and figure out what happened Well there's a huge dynamic one of the things is there's a huge dynamic range in the movie there's a lot of very quiet dialogue yeah. and then there's a lot of very very loud like maximally loud stuff so I was I, I was writing the the levels. We, we didn't have that problem as much, but we just had a problem understand in, intelligibility, which has become it's becoming a problem. I think in the, our industry, absolutely is that is that absolutely. I think the tenant. Well, tenant was we just we literally watched tenant and then went back and watched it a week later with the with dialogue, and we're like, yeah. oh, that's what that meant. Yeah, I'm watched, glad you you're know, complaining just, about this because you're young, ish. Uh, a lot of my, but, but <laughs> people like me and my, Scott my, Wilkinson are old ish, and uh, right, people just go, oh, you're too old, you can't hear it. My my, my kids, like my kids can't couldn't those. hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Couldn't couldn't understand it. Yeah. You know, it's not. This isn't a. a I actually older, routinely on my five one turn up the center channel about five dB just so I can because that happens so much now. Leo, they had an interview with Nolan where he said that he saw that in some old movies where the he dialogue just became way. part of the overall yeah. soundscape, and he loved that idea. And Robert like, Altman <laughs> was famous for that. If you if you watch any of Robert Altman's movies, Mash or uh, McCabe and Mrs. Miller, there's huge amounts of dialogue unintelligible mixed in right. or overlapping. Yeah. And that's that that's exactly why Altman did it. He wanted it to be natural. It's like, because that's real life, right? And people don't, yeah. Like it is. It's just, yeah, it's just, it's, 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 I, I will say that it keeps us, it, it is a problem for theaters because as this starts to happen, I go, I look at a, I look at a film and I'm starting to like pay attention to who the sound designers are and, yeah. and go, well, that's one I want to watch at home. <laughs> like, yeah. like, Cause like, I'm going to turn the, it. Yeah. I got to turn the titles on, you yeah. know, cause I'm, you know, and like, like a Christopher Nolan, I won't go to see in a big screen anymore because I know that I'm going to have to turn right. the title, the, the subtitles. I on. do want to see Dune again on IMAX. Um, I'm going to go see it. Here's the funny thing about that is that there was a lot, the, the director was very upset, obviously about the fact that this was going to HBO max um, which is what we watched it on. Uh, watching Dune in HBO Max has me want to go see it. Yeah. 
on IMAX. You know, like because I was like, this is something I need to see on a yeah. huge Although I watched it on a screen, good 4K you know? 70 inch HDR screen, and I was only Lisa and I were maybe five or six feet away, so it, it was a good experience. It was probably like a regular movie theater experience, right? But, but I, I think, think that, it, it deserves IMAX, especially those nice IMAX or scenes. Dolby. They yeah. flip aspect ratio throughout the movie, which annoys me. Not all of it was shot in IMAX. A lot of it was shot in 16 or in widescreen. So Not they, 16, but probably whatever super, it is. They, super 35. Yeah. So they go back and forth, I hear. And some people didn't like that. Scott Wilkinson said it didn't bother him. But maybe you know, we'll I do I a don't field trip, Alex. It. We Tenet, got an IMAX. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. San Francisco. You know, the, um, uh, what was it? Tenet uh, does that, I think. And, and I think Christopher Nolan does that with IMAX, where he swaps back and forth. Yeah, I don't like um, that. And I haven't found that it affects me. Okay. You know, I just, you know, I, I, I just, I don't notice it. It makes it me happens, think I'm than, watching a movie, which I... I feel right. like it's, I don't want to really think that. <laughs> like you're right. seeing the, the mechanics. <laughs> I want to see on Dune, man. I'm on Ericus right yeah. now. As someone does does a lot of research on 120 frames per second, 24 frames a second makes me feel like I'm watching yeah, a movie I know. all the time. Yeah, you know, you know. Like, like, you're like, always watching very, a movie. Very slow. Yeah, so yeah, so. the announcement, uh, they greenlit it October 2023. They had already begun work, some work on it, but it, they have to rebuild the sets. Which really pisses me off. That, that really is unusual. You had it Usually all, man. Super inefficient. Yeah, yeah. You had also, it. Also, because now, now you get the you get the actors opportunity to say, "Oh, well, here's how much money you made, and now here's much." Unless you want to recast me or use CGI to make me look. Make if James look Brolin like sh shaves his beard between now and then, I'm going to be <laughs> pissed. All right. So. I think I think James Brolin beard has its own like legal, uh, its own like agent <laughs> and representation at this point. So that's that's that makes it even more complicated. You will that's love the beard, portrayal sir. of Gurney Halleck and Duncan Idaho. Uh, admittedly, Jason Momoa is an action character, but nevertheless, it's appropriate in that role. Um, they make Kinds the uh, planetary uh, biologist a female instead of a male, but she's great. Um, I think everybody is cast perfectly. The lady Jessica, Rebecca Ferguson, is perfect in that role. She has the most to do emotionally. Everybody yeah. else, you know. And Timothy Chamelet is a perfect emo 15-year-old. <laughs> 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 when we were watching it, Lisa said, how old is he supposed to be? I said, he's supposed to be 15. He's, not, he's a little, obviously a little older than that. But he's acting like a 15-year-old. It's good. He's good. He, you know, he played a Henry the Fifth. Um, oh, he's a great rendition. actor, and yeah. he and he did oh, no. it. It feels very similar in that in that process. He's a little moody, he did, you know. He's a little he's good at that, you know. He's just got that, and the hair is always in his eyes, moody. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember, he's a teenager, so it's cast okay. well. Yeah, he's well. Yeah. He's perfectly cast, especially because I'm hoping there will be twenty of these, and he will die in old age, having made number nineteen, and they could just keep right. on going. And I, I'm sure. That's what surprises me. The legendary didn't say this is a franchise. Yeah. Well, the question really is, is is whether they, when you talk about that, whether they they shift gears at some point, like Foundation, to a series, like you do the first it would two. Would have been so much really better big. as a series. They are I would have series. Um, it's it's launching on HBO Max soon. I think it's the Bene Gesserit. I forget the exact title. Oh, they're doing spinoffs and stuff. Yeah. Spinoffs, yeah. 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 But I but I think that if I think that you may see two big feature films. But I could I could imagine it shifting gears into a. I have mixed um, feelings. We'll Actually, just keep covering that. I was going to ask you about this, Alex, because the budgets, I guess, for features are are much 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 higher, right? So the feature could. I mean, <laughs> when I look foundation. at Foundation. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Like, we went back then to watch Foundation, and it was a little more like watching Star Trek. It was like, mm -hmm. it, it's a, it's just a notch below. It is. I mean, it's it's probably. I mean, I don't know what the numbers are, but it's probably thirty to fifty million dollars an episode, though. I mean, it's a it's a oh, lot it's of money. Oh, still expensive for, per agree. episode. It's, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and for that amount of time, it's still like a hundred million dollar film. It's not like a two hundred fifty million dollar film, um, but but it's still it's still it's still pretty grand for you know for a series. But I think that what's nice about it is is we get to really do a lot of character development. You know, we get to see something you know um, and really build it out. There's so I, many I movies that you agree. feel like oh, we skipped over we skipped over half the you know the, the of people all would complain about things in the world. Dune should be. 20 episodes it should not be or know, or, four it, it could, you could, or five but hours. you could also chew on it a lot if you imagine harry potter i mean they could have done that they could have started at 2001 and still be doing harry potter you know and, and covering it in the detail Absolutely. that the fans wanted to cover it and, 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 and same thing with 
Dune Lord is, of the Rings. The book yeah. Dune is filled with exposition. It's filled with yeah. little side scenes, all of which are completely missing. And without right. Sting as Baron Harkonnen, I just don't know how you can make a movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you brought, they should have brought him you back. Will, you will, by Best the way, Andy, piece and a motion picture. You, you will love their choices with Baron Harkonnen. Yeah. Much, okay. much, much better. I couldn't find, I couldn't find an exact number for uh, Foundation, but they say it costs as much as a movie for every two episodes, and they're working right. on 80 episodes. Episodes, so it's like eight 50. seasons of ten episodes. I think it's probably fifty. Yeah. Yeah. But can, uh, can, I, can I just? But can I just quickly say that sometimes the, the book, the book is the book. You've got the book. The book is there. The book is safe. Sometimes the opportunity of making a movie is saying, well, what if we kind of simplify this so that we get to the essence of the story and get it moving faster? Sometimes that can actually be good. It's. It, it, I think that one of the problems with uh, with a, a lot of the ways that they're doing like Marvel movies these days is that stretching I it out really too much. Yeah. I, yeah, well, that that and I, I really don't need to know this like eighteen hundred issue backstory right. and this connection to this other character. Sometimes it really is all about here is a character I can explain him in two sentences and we're going to give him or her some challenges that they're going to have to work through through which we're going to learn about the character. So but, that's the, that's why sometimes I think that Lord of the Rings being compressed into three movies is actually a really, really good thing because it got it, it does get people interested in thinking I think, that wow, I really I love this story. Now I want to read this. I think you'll like that because I think yeah. Dune. I think Dune uh, the movie gets the gets the main message very well and it's emotionally yeah. very similar. So I think you get that exact feeling like they hit the high points. But it is kind of like a highlights. Yeah. So, 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 as long as it's less, as long as it's less than eighty three percent interior monologue, it'll be better yeah, than the original. No, I, I agree. Walked out on. Uh, yeah, and it, I stand corrected. He played uh, uh, Fade, right? The, uh, the nephew yeah, of the Fade Baron. Rotha. Yeah, Fade Rotha. And David ba Dave Bautista plays uh, Fade very. I think it's Dave Bautista plays Fade very well. Codpiece. No, Not since Zardoz no that we've seen a more tactical, <laughs> a more better tactical use of limited. <laughs> the Beast Raban, pardon me. Well, who's do we even see Fade? We haven't even seen Fade, so we don't know. Never mind. Maybe it'll be Sting. It could be Sting. That would be hysterical. That would be great. Actually. <laughs> as long as it's not Ed Sheeran, we'll uh, fight I'm, him I'm okay with my with blade. It. Anyway, I did not mean to make this Dune break weekly. I sorry. I totally apologize. <laughs> I just wanted to give you the no, no. It's not your fault. We'd like to it's welcome up our first sponsor, Dune. <laughs> I've been wanting to talk about this since I saw the movie, and I knew yeah. you guys were the ones to talk about it with. So uh, yeah, it was just the first half. Of anyway, the first for the, novel. the the answer is yes. You should go watch it. Uh, it is an amazing film, yes. and you're going to want to watch it in a big screen at least yes. once. I mean, I, I I actually am glad I watched it at home so I could turn on the subtitles. But yeah. I'm now going to go and enjoy it on a giant. I'm going to see it several times. Have to. It's that good. Yeah. And yeah, and really I good. I they they made three different soundtrack albums, <laughs> and I'm going to oh, buy wow. all of them because <laughs> Hans Zimmer's uh, been amazing. Hans. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is you don't hear it and say, "Oh, Hans Zimmer." Sometimes Sometimes you do, right? There's some Zimmer, you kind of know it's a Hans Zimmer, just like John Williams, you know it's John Williams. This, I was saying, who is the who is the composer? This is really good, really interesting. So um, I think you'll like it. And the sand is okay. very realistic. I don't think it's CGI. <laughs> they cast the sand well. Some. Some. <laughs> yeah. casting. Maybe. Yeah, I guess when the yeah, worms it's, come. It's, you'll that's, love that's, the worms, of, Andy. Of, you'll yeah, love the sand <laughs> worms. They do, they do make an appearance. Um, all right, enough. Only if they're overtly sexual, I hope, just like in the David Lynch version. Uh, they are not overtly sexual, but they are terrifying. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm sorry. We'll get back to the... There's so much Apple stuff. I don't know. I apologize. We're testing the faithful. <laughs> yeah. There's people sitting there going, but what, what about the M1 Max? Uh, our show today brought... We'll get to that in a second. We got the, we got the, we got the goods promise you. Renee, Andy, Alex, they're all here today. Mac Break Weekly brought to you by our sponsor, Melissa. You know, uh, if your business, your customer address data is absolutely, you know, vital. It's how you reach your customers. Actually, it's not just address. It's emails, phone numbers, names. Melissa does it all. Did you know that 36 million address changes were processed by the Postal Service last year? 36 million. I bet you some of those were your customers, customers who will no longer get your mailings, your catalogs. 30% on average of customer data goes bad every year. Melissa's job, make your data current and accurate. That's why they're called the address 
experts. They've been so for 35 years. People love them. 10,000 businesses trust the address experts. In fact, Melissa's renewal rate is over 92%. That is, that is very high. It means people love Melissa and need it and use it, and you will too. Verify everything with their global address verification service. It works in 240-plus countries and territories, and you can even do it as the data is being entered. I'll explain that in a second. Addresses, emails, phone numbers, names. Get rid of duplicates with Melissa's data matching. You can eliminate clutter and duplicates, increase the accuracy of the database. You do not want to mail multiple catalogs to the same person. That's crazy. You'll reduce your mailing costs, your postage. You can also enhance your customer profiles with demographic information, public information like marital status, social media handles. Now, let me explain how you can deploy it because this is super flexible. They've really gone the extra mile here. Yes, there's an on-prem version, but you can also use Melissa as a web service. They have an FTP site, so you can do a secure FTP upload and download. There's a software as a service delivery options. There's a new Lookups app. In fact, that's on iOS and Android, which lets you search names, addresses, and more at your fingertips for one time only. And they have a very complete API, which a lot of companies use in their customer service software uh, or in their uh, shopping uh, uh, carts. Because, you know, it's it happens. Customer service, even customers accidentally swap numbers or get something wrong and Melissa will actually fix it. You probably used Melissa in a shopping cart when it, you know, fills it in and says, you mean this? Yes. By the way, Melissa treats your data like it's, you know, gold. They continually undergo independent security audits. They are committed to your data security, your privacy, and they're fully compliant. SOC 2, HIPAA, GDPR, so you can use it with confidence. The best support, too. Sign up for a service-level agreement. You'll get 24-7 world-famous support from the Melissa's Global Support Center. And the pandemic's not over. Melissa is still supporting communities and qualifying essential workers during COVID-19. You may qualify for six months of free service. Apply online at melissa.com. Congrats to Melissa, just named a leader in address verification and data quality software by G2 Crowd's Fall 2021 report. So you know they're meeting the diverse needs of their customers. Well done, Melissa. Uh, I think, I hope I've convinced you. You need it. Make sure your customer contact data is up to date. You could try the API right now in the developer portal. It's easy to log on, sign up, start playing in the API sandbox. Get started today. 1,000 records clean for free. Melissa.com slash twit. M-E-L-I-S-S-A. Melissa.com slash twit. Twit. We thank him so much for supporting Mac Break Weekly, and we thank you for supporting us by uh, using that special address. That way you get the thousand records, too, so there's a benefit to you. Melissa.com slash twit. All right. Whew. How how you doing uh, with your uh, your M1 uh, setup? Did you get the everything downloaded now, uh, Dwindle? And, uh, actually, he said I was enjoying the Dune conversation. Okay. Fine. <laughs> all right. Okay. First of all, when you're linking in with Rendezvous with Rama, that's the one that I really <laughs> no, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay. Stop. I was just getting interested. Stop. <laughs> so, um, Andrew the Third. I, again, I'm going to encourage people who want to know more about the SOC to read uh, the amazing yeah. Anon Tech uh, write up. Really, really, really detailed. But there are lots of reviews. I have not seen one negative. Uh, yet there are a couple of people yeah. who mocked the HDMI port and the SD card port, and then there were even more people who said the good, the good days are back. <laughs> yep, <laughs> there's a certain nostalgia. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I will be using that SD card because uh, slot uh, on my trip. I'm taking my uh, yeah. my new 14 uh, inch to uh, Mexico starting uh, yeah. in the morning and. Some people pointed out, even if you don't care about SD for camera, just stick an SD card in there and use it to back up your system every night. Like, just, yeah, like there's, exactly. there's a lot of things you can do with that. Although it's pretty slow. I mean, I you'd prefer to use but overnight, right? Like Renee yeah, said. overnight. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just I'm just so glad that I'm eager to hand it off to Renee. But all all I really have to say is that thank goodness that Apple is reclaiming the the Pro designation, making it really yes. mean something. Just, yes. just like you said earlier, there was it you or Renee who said that there there used to be just such an overlap between the MacBook Pro and the MacBook. Air even before the transition to M1 last year, and now it's like no, there is a. If you walk in with fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars to spend on a Mac, 
There are people who will come out with a MacBook Air and $800 more in their pocket. There are people who will come out with a MacBook Pro and <laughs> spend $800 more than they wanted to spend, but because they saw exactly <laughs> the machine that they needed, not one that, well, I, not like last year when I thought that, well, I'll buy the MacBook Pro, but only because I want the extra storage and I want the uh, and I want the, the cooling fans. And that was the only reason why I bought the Pro instead of the Air. John, when Gruber, I think that John Gruber nailed it in uh, his review of the MacBook Pro. He, ex he explained it. Now that I think about it, he's ex absolutely right. Apple uses Pro two different ways. So when you talk about the AirPods Pro, Pro yes. means something he says more like nicer or deluxe. A couth premium. euphemism for premium, writes John. Yeah. And, and yeah, the Touch Bar MacBook Pros were undeniably nice. So they were pro in that context. But Apple, he says, has revisited what the pro in MacBook Pro means. It means professional. And this is, this is uh, Apple kind of retrenching from, oh, it's premium to professional. So I guess the MacBook Pro 13-inch that I bought is really the premium version of pro. But these, there is no question, these are professionals. Well, you and you saw that in the messaging as well, you know. So you know, when you looked at the keynote, they're really talking about it as a pro. They're talking about pro apps doing pro things. Um, and I think that for for a lot of folks, I think what's what's exciting for Mac users is for a long time, maybe the last decade, we've been like, well, it's not as fast, but but we really like the operating system and the inconvenience of it and everything else. I mean, if we run real power, we know we have to go somewhere else. Uh, but 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 we really like the operating system, and Apple is now giving us both. You know, yeah. and, and I think that's going to be that's going to be really that's exciting. You know, for next year too. Uh, 120 hertz refresh rate. Um, yep, looks pretty good. Yeah, Andre Fast. had a quibble with it. Like he he put it under a low, like a high speed camera, turned on dark mode, and then started moving it back and forth. He said it doesn't refresh as fast as he wants it to. I haven't been able to reproduce that, but that's very personal. Like some people can see dropped frames at 120 frames per second. I cannot. <laughs> uh, I can see colors where other people don't care about differences in colors. So uh, like it's, it's gonna be very personal. But like you can nitpick. If you find a display technology, I can tell you how to hurt it. So it just depends right. on how you want to hurt your particular display technology. Uh, also, he does point out, Andre points out again in non tech not all apps use 60 hertz. So a number of people were complaining about Twitter, but it, or use 120 hertz, but Twitter is still back at 16 hertz. And so sure. that's it. The more it. you use like the native stuff, the more you'll benefit from this. The more that you've done custom stuff, the more it's going to take them yeah. time to update that yeah. custom stuff. And, yeah. And, yeah. and this is a shot across the bow for most developers is you just have to use the the libraries that they're handing you because they're now, they're, we're an un... You know, yes. Uh, you know, the territory now is all apples. Like it, it really is something that if you're going to try to write your own, you're now, you know, we've, I've seen in the last, like audio right now is just a disaster, you know, on M1 and, and um, in, in Monterey because the, the plug-in manufacturers have all these creative ways that they uh, have done this stuff for the last, you know, decade or more. And, you know, now trying to keep up, they can't, you know, they can't get it out. They can't get the, the new updates out because they're not able to um, keep up with it. So you really have to rely on Apple's, which for good or for better or for worse, now that things are starting to accelerate, you have to rely on Apple's libraries or you're going to have, have trouble keeping up. Yeah. Um, they, in, in, so, so, in, in, go ahead. Sorry. No, to, 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 to button what uh, what what, uh, what Alex was saying. Yeah, that's it. That, that's all. That's always been one of Apple's pro many problems with uh, dealing with developers. They'll often say you are required to use this library, but then when they say, "Well, this library is completely inadequate for what my program, what, what my app does," they will say tough darts, which is bad enough. But then they will say, "Well, well how come my competitor? Or how come this other app gets to use it?" So, well, we've given them an, ex an exclusion an exception that you're not entitled to. Well, why am I not entitled to that? And then radio silence and this is why there's a lot of bad blood between apple and uh, developers they're not get, they're re requiring them to use tools that are inadequate for purpose and not really explaining well, why they're applying this uh, uh, not, uh, not unfairly across uh, different developers well, and I, I think that what, what i'm talking about specifically is not so much requirements as you know the developers can write their own solutions for some of these things but they're just going to get crushed by the folks that are sitting on top right. of the libraries that apple makes because apple is you know they're just making all of those super efficient you know all, uh, people who ignored the metal you know and and you know apple and wwc was talking about metal for years going you really want to move over you know like this is not you know and and they kept that that gave them lots of time to think about it. And the folks that ignored that are really paying the price now. Yeah. So related to that also is single-threaded versus multi-threaded. Um, yeah. 
And in fact, it th it, according to uh, Anand, uh, to Andre uh, Frumanas Frumusano, who wrote the article, the uh, single-threaded performance is not massively changed from the M1. But on the other no, hand... same cores. Same cores. But on the other hand, let me give you his quote from the next page. The multi-threaded performance, a real monster. Uh, yeah. So that means you really want to use apps that are written using Apple libraries, written native to the you know the, the hardware, and are multi-threaded if possible, if they need to be. I so mean, obviously, my Emacs like, doesn't need to be multi-threaded, but... This will be the best or worst for everybody. Like, what Apple's done here is also made a single target for developers. Like, before, developers had to worry about, like, I have to write to the CPU, I have to write to what could be an AMD, like, in the PC world, what could be an AMD or NVIDIA or Iris Pro or, like, whatever different kinds of graphics. They had to handle all of this. Right now, like, if you're starting to write for, and your target is Apple Silicon, you're writing for one thing. Like, Metal will handle anything GPU-related. Uh, all the different programming frameworks will handle all of that. You're just writing your code. It, it means that code is much more dependent on everything that Apple's doing, but you have a you have a much smaller job to do if you want to write highly optimized code that works really well with Apple's customer base. Yeah. And it, it does put uh, com uh, companies that are trying to write cross-platform, it, it does put them at a disadvantage. You know, like it's just harder for them yeah, to do this yeah. because well, you know, like, they have a uh, bunch of libraries. Buying a tailored suit versus off the rack, you know, if you or supporting a console versus supporting a PC, like yeah. like if you want to write for yeah. an X, like it's basically an X. Like if we look at the PlayStation Five and the Xbox Series X, those are AMD SOCs. You know, like that. that right. A lot of products are moving in that direction because they have they don't have all the benefits. They have massive trade offs, but they do have some tangible benefits. Yeah. Yeah. So ideally, you're going to use software. I have to say, I've been very impressed over the year that I've been using the M1. Uh, I, don't, I don't have any more Intel processes running. Does Rosetta 2 benefit yeah. uh, on these newer chips in any way? You have the same... Um you have the same uh, x86 reorder sequencing for optimizing uh, the translation layer. And if you wrote for Metal, you get all of that GPU performance. So there's still going to be apps that paradoxically work better on, uh, like through emulation on M1 than they did natively, just because they're writing for Metal and Metal is so much more accelerated. And then you have like those eight performance cores versus the four performance cores on M1. So just anything that's multi-core aware is going to be faster. And uh, what is impressive in, the, in all the benchmarks, and I hate benchmarks because they're so synthetic, yeah. but what is yes. impressive is that in many cases, uh, these machines are running as well as the very best top-of-the-line desktop machines with no power yeah. constraints. Yeah. So and Even on battery. Again, that we, we can't, amazing. We, 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 oh, sorry, go ahead. We we really can't underscore that enough that this is this is this is the what it can do when you're still limited by die size you're still limited by thermals you're still limited by powers that this is this is why uh, like I'm I'm resisting the urge to like saying but we have money for one of these new laptops and remember last year's laptop was more of a MacBook Air like no wait we're as impressive as this year's going to be if you want a Mac Mini you are going to get the the Mini with a capital M. It's going to be so yeah. powerful. <laughs> really interesting explanation in the uh, review where he talks about Apple being forced to use uh, Intel's uh, motherboard graphics, their highest end Iris motherboard graphics, but really uh, keeping that uh, a lid on what Apple could do with the GPU. Um, that has all changed. And so things have, that is, he, he says, the arguably the star of the show for Apple's uh, I, uh, Mac SOCs is the GPU because um, they keep on adding we were too many cores. About, well, we were <laughs> worried about discrete GPU. You know, missing a discrete yes. GPU. Um, Iris was and never again, quite enough for what Apple would like to do for their largest 15, 16 inch MacBook Pros. Apple has been able to turn to discrete GPUs to make up the difference, but the lack of space and power for a GPU in the 13 inch MacBook Pro form factor has been a bit more constraining. Uh, however, now uh, because the GPU is a part of the SOC, um, those constraints are effectively gone. Um, yeah. And in a laptop, it's yeah. an implementation detail. Like in a, in a big desktop tower, you're going to maybe want to take the GPU out, put a new GPU in, but no one's really swapping GPUs in a laptop. It's not right. It's not feasible. Yeah. So Well, I remember we uh, bought that. When, we, or not. when I bought that 16-inch, I bought the eGPU unit, you know, the little tower yeah. Thing and that I guess made some difference, um, but yeah. this is going to be ideal, obviously. Yeah. Also, it's going to be more important for homogeneous computing 
that this is every everything that that uh, that Apple was able to achieve on the iPhone is now approach is now uh, spreading across not just uh, Macs but also again Pixel phones, it's, it's other desktops, other laptops. The idea that you have all these GPUs, you have all these other core components on the die that aren't just there to say, oh well, GPU, well that's going to be great for graphics performance. No, because they're going to be throwing so much like artificial intelligence stuff on the GPU, so many other calculations on the GPU. It's it really is. This, this is why the benchmarks aren't really terribly useful. You really need somebody who's going to tear it apart and say, here is what here is what an app does in 2021, 2022. And here is how it's going to use the stuff that you see on the CPU, because by the time you, you get a number and you can an independent lab can prove that this number is higher than this other number, but it doesn't really affect how fast is it going to take for you to take a picture, how fast it's going to take for you to compile an app. So, And yeah. that takes us to the biggest difference between, as I mentioned, the Pro and the Max is a GPU. The M1 Pro has half the GPU clusters, half system-level cache, half of memory bandwidth. But aside from those three things, in every other respect, is the same. So that makes it a smaller chip, easier to make, less expensive um, so and you can get bin down versions on the 14. Like if you want to save some money and you don't think you'll be needing all the cores, you can get like the 24 core GPU and the right. eight core CPU to save a little bit extra cash. Right. right. Yeah. So I spent the, uh, the minimum amount of money, $2,000 to get this, which is still <laughs> the cheap one. In fact, this, no, no air conditioning in the factory stereo. I, paid, Leo. <laughs> it's, I know it's still expensive. Um, but, uh, but it's not uh, out of the reach of the of kind of a high end uh, yeah. Intel laptop. It's right. you know it's got a high end Dell sometime and like it, it recalibrates how expensive you think. Apple yeah, is. And, and I often do buy those i seven based uh, Dells with lots of RAM and yeah. lots of storage. And yeah, they're two thousand dollars or Lenovo's. It's not out of the yeah. question at all. So it's kind of in there. Uh, and 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 good news, Apple still offers the MacBook Air. <laughs> you know, you could still get a thousand dollar laptop. So there's a there's now a really nice range, and we're just waiting for this next level of high high end uh, stuff to come along. Um, what else? What else should we talk about? Yes, there's still a headphone jack. They fixed uh, the camera. <laughs> the camera. How That's do you like that? Eden's headphone jack. Yeah. Oh. Uh, the yeah. camera is really really good. Um, I, I spoiler alert. I, I did a Mac OS uh, Monterey review with friend of the show John Gruber, and I'm on my camera like you see me now, and he's on the the um, MacBook uh, <laughs> Pro camera, and he looks terrific. Like we could literally have not have done that. He'd have to have used it. Like previously, the last time he used his iPhone to record it because the Mac camera was nowhere nearly good enough, and it looks really good because you're getting an, essentially an, a 1080p camera like the new iMac. It's got a much bigger sensor, and it's got the eight, basically the iPhone 12 image signal processor layered on top of that for white balance and and color grading and all of those things. So it's it spits out a completely, and this is not damning with faint praise, but like it spits out a, like a very competent image that you could use for Zoom, for FaceTime, for all of these things. Where is yeah. that Where is that video? I want to show it. Is it on your YouTube? Video. It's not up yet. I'm still oh, editing it. it's not it. up yet. We're going to okay. do a quick yeah. 15 minutes chat, and like an hour later, are, I'm still editing it. Yeah. Are you, are, yeah. are you doing uh, any, uh, what I'd love to see is a head-to-head -head with it in a Brio. You know, Logitech Brio? I have. So in my review, I, I have the Brio, I have the Logitech <laughs> 920, I have an Apple's, okay. most of their previous MacBook Pros. All and how did you, with the know, as if you've done it, but yeah, it's night and that's, day. That's, I mean, like you can see the cameras getting better with the M1, with the uh, MacBook, the iMac Pro from 2017, because that was 1080p. And then the mm -hmm. iMac camera is even better than that. And then this is just better than any camera they've had before. Yeah. And, and, and how would you compare it to the Brio? I like the color better. Like I find the Brio's color a little off. Like is, it, a little Brio, Logitech has always been a little warm and rosy for me, like a little magenta shifted mm -hmm. for me. Yep. I think Apple does a better job on the colors, but they also, Apple tends to show everything. So like the Brio looks a little bit more natural in terms of darks and lights where Apple exposes more of the shadows, which some people hate. What, what do you think of the resolution? Is it, it, it does it feel like it's, because the Brio is coming 4K down to 1080. Yes. No, it looks really good. Because again, you've got the silicon yeah. behind it. I would here's use this a, over Here's Brio, the uh, video uh, in your um, pro review. Um, here's the 1080p video. It does look good. Yeah. That's yeah, the old I, one. <laughs> I did not include the 480p version of the earlier laptops. <laughs> okay. So this is fun. You're going back. Uh, this is actually great. Uh, comparing head to head. Uh, it really, uh, actually, that's yeah. the best one, the iMac, right? That was the 2020 iMac. That was the old, good. yeah, that was the old. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you got them all. Here's a 720p <laughs> from the. 2020 M1. Yeah. Gosh, that's I terrible. I finish off again. I bet, There's a Logitech uh, 920. Yeah. yeah. 
I, I, bet, the, I bet that the, the brio. The, the, yeah. Yeah, you're right. The brio is a little, a little rosy. Yeah. Well, the, the, and the, it's always been a little the, red, a little magenta for me. I mean, yeah. the issue, the, one of the issues that we have is that, yeah, I mean, that the problem is, is can you adjust the color? Like, so with the tools that we use to adjust the brio, if we turn those on, we can't see the, the, the Mac, you know, the security goes on and we can't, the Mac, literally the camera turns off. You know, the internal camera. And all so, that all really matters, frankly, because you're not going to use this for v making your next feature film, is, is that right. you look okay in a, in a Zoom call. And that's yeah. clearly you do. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, I, yeah. I imagine that the, the 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 department that's in charge of internal cameras got a whole bunch of more a whole bunch of more money a whole bunch of more time last year because I I would love to see the timeline of the design of this machine when they say that okay guess what we're now going to make sure that the adequate is no longer adequate now it has to be exceptional because people not not because we thought that 720p was a was a really great solution but because now people are going to notice this people are going to this is going to be a differentiator yeah. between our yeah. laptop and now other they're laptops. on camera. <laughs> well, and also right. FaceTime is is more and more important to Apple. I mean, I think FaceTime has really come oh. into its own in the last or, or, or just, or just how they... Leo. It's not out yet, um, but fa uh, f it's out for the iOS. For iOS, you can do FaceTime with spatial audio now. It's not out for the Mac yet, oh, but wow. I got to try a demo. It sounds really good. Like, you could, like, it would be like Alex is over here and Andy's oh, over nice. here and Leo's there. And it makes it much easier to figure out who's talking as well because they're, they're right. naturally where you position them. And this computer is great for that because it's got the spatial audio speakers and it's got the FaceTime, the much higher quality camera. So you're getting more of like a, a virtual conference room, if that makes sense. Nice. Well, that's great. Yeah. yeah, and I think that I think it is important that the camera looks good because I, it, in meetings, you know, what's happened is is that we went from being informal to the fact that we're having lots and lots of meetings. People are working from home; they're not going back. It's not going to, you know, we're not going back to the before times. And uh, and if you look and sound better uh, in a meeting, it changes the level of authority you have. So for executives who are using these these laptops, being able to open it up and and look um, better is is not just something that is it, just okay isn't okay anymore. Yeah. You know, for a lot of them. Yeah. Well, pros, good news. You finally got some hardware worthy <laughs> of the name from uh, Apple. Uh, how do you like the um, the black background keyboard, by the way? Some people are not I have liking mixed, that. I have mixed yeah. feelings on it. Like, it looks really nice, but I do worry that for Show people us. who have low, lower vision, yeah, it's, it's going to be a little bit less contrast. Harder to see, harder, yeah. yeah. Harder to pick out the individual characters. The keycaps are lit, though. I kind of like it. Yeah, except for the Touch ID. Okay. Yeah. There's the Touch ID in the upper right-hand corner. It just looks yeah. like a blank key. Look at the size of that escape key. God bless you. All the <laughs> all the Vim users in the world are going, thank you, Apple. It's thank got you. Full size and, 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 it actually... It actually feels like they're being a little petulant. It's like, fine, okay. you want you, 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 we, we're not we're not going to give you your okay. damn escape key back. We're going to give you one so big. It wasn't even a room for a one key because we made your escape key so big. <laughs> now just don't let's just use it in lowercase L, just like on an old typewriter. If you want to use the number one, uh, great playback oh, uh, with ProRes, ProRes Raw, Apple. Uh, now, really, ProRes is is finally in uh, the iPhone. It just came out. We'll talk about that. Apple's and really DaVinci dubbing. DaVinci Resolve, too, not just Final Cut. Like, DaVinci Resolve is amazing uh, yeah. with the M1. Mm -hmm. Everybody's doubling down. I think this is... Alex, do you think ProRes is going to become... I mean, obviously, it's still a proprietary format, but is it going to become the default format, Alex? It's... It's it's a pretty popular format right now. <laughs> like, like it's like, yeah. we, you know, generally when we're working with folks and we say we want ProRes, that's what almost everybody that we work with wants at this point. It's ProRes or DNX are the ones that we get the most. Um, and uh, and so ProRes is probably one of the most popular um, formats already when it comes to post-production. Um, and and so I think that that's, it's already doing well, but with an accelerator and the ability to do all of this, I think it it's really for media professionals, it's going to be hard to, like, especially if you're going on the road, if you're a reporter or you're doing, you know, stuff for YouTube or doing other things like that, and you're on the road a lot doing work, it's going to be really hard to buy anything other than this computer because that those render times that, that Renee is showing and other people are showing, that's not, that, that's not like just more convenient. You know, this is like, I gathered something and, and especially now that I, you know, you really could do news gathering with an iPhone and, and this computer you know, and, and really turn it around fast where you're able to, you know, gather something in Apple ProRes on your phone uh, with a great camera, put it on the computer, edit it down and, and export it really, really fast. And so, I mean, I think the one, the one soft point there is the amount of time it takes to get from the phone to the computer, which is uh, the limitation of the lightning um, connection. So, so I think that that's going to be something that as we move towards 
pro models, quote unquote, pro models of phones, I think that transport has to get a lot faster. Yeah. Um, there's no throttling in this, right? I mean, one of the problems with the 16-inch i9, as, as you may remember, the YouTuber who put it in a freezer, um, <laughs> yeah. was that you just never, and I think this is true of all Intel laptops, you really never get to see the full benefit of that. Uh, you don't see Intel changed their marketing definition to account for that. They they changed what turbo basically meant yeah. on the Intel computer <laughs> yeah. to account for that. Oh, and I should, by the way, <laughs> I, I should point out, uh, uh, I saw some early benchmarks uh, from uh, of the Alder Lake, which is the next Intel yeah. mobile platform coming out next year, and I I I was surprised. I don't think it's time yet. WCC Tech had this. I don't think it's time yet to call it. CCF tech, to call it for uh, Apple, that Intel, and this is good, by the way, Intel has AMD said, too. and AMD, okay, yeah. okay, what can we do here? <laughs> and so I, that's pretty encouraging, the early benchmarks uh, from WCCF tech for, I don't know how they got all their like benchmarks, and it is very early, but it looks pretty good. The, it does look good. The question, me, like the big difference with, oh, sorry, Andy, Alex, go. go ahead, Alex, and then we'll all I was going to say is the the hard part is is that Intel is at the is in in a mature platform, and Apple is in a in a, a new platform, and so it, it's it's one thing for the first for Intel to keep up with the first update. Uh, it, the question really will be, and we won't know this for another year. Can they keep up with update number? You know, the next fall and the fall after twenty twenty two twenty twenty three is where we're going to see whether. Apple can continue at this pace. If they do, then you have laptops that are faster than enterprise. Yeah. And the incentives are different too. Like Intel and AMD, their bread and butter really is servers. That's where they make most of their money. They're enterprise clients and they continually work to bring that. That's what pays for their technology. And they work to bring that down into smaller and smaller form factors. And they, they can't get into mobile. Like that's just a brick wall for them. And laptops is iffy sometimes where Apple is the opposite. Like the iPhone is our bread and butter. They're, they live in small thermal envelopes. And so scaling to them is like, oh, we have room to breathe now. And their question is, can, can they scale up to this? I probably can't scale up to the, to like server side, like Xeons and the big AMD Athlons, all those chips, maybe like who knows, but they're going to live in laptops for a while. And it's going to be desktops, you know, it's going to go back and forth, I think a lot, but I think laptops are going to favor Apple for a while still. Uh, except for gaming, right? Still not quite yeah. the gaming platform. I still think Apple has to build some kind of um, engine. Well, they have to. No, I don't think they have to build an engine. I think they have to build a game. They, they put the money into it. You know, yeah. like a hundred million dollars into a game that really takes full advantage of the platform. That that is, you know, really competitive. I mean, they just have to put it, put it all in. I think that Apple Arcade gives them the data that they probably need and their understanding of the game industry to some degree to figure that out. But I think that a you know some kind of big game that is heavily graphics, you know, laden and really pushes, you know, beyond what. And, you know, that what we've seen with other games is, and then runs across, of course, all the platforms. Right. I think it's something that is very hard to do. But I think that if Apple could crack well, that, they if could they probably started three years in. ago, we should see it any day now. <laughs> it takes a while. Right. <laughs> just paid studios a fortune to port. The way Microsoft would solve it yeah. with money. I don't they think it has to. Studios a fortune to port. I, yeah. I think that the fundamental opportunity for Apple is to build something a little simpler, to be honest. I think that there's a there's a market that, you know, the casual game market is bigger, bigger than most of these other game markets. Um, but I think that there yeah. are... One of the problems with a lot of these games is that you really have to play them a lot to get to understand what's going on. Um, and so I think that, uh, you know, they're for even serious game gamers. companies. But you, well, you, even you do that you for the same reason you do it for video editors, because those people are influential to other people. You're right. It's a smaller market. Uh, but I think that you could build something that's scale. I mean, when we, the, you know, one of the reasons that we play, you know, we watch soccer or we watch football or we watch baseball is that those games are actually pretty simple to, to you know, to understand what's actually happening. We just don't see video games like that, <laughs> you know, or not very many of them that are that are really um, aggressive in that aggressive as far as how the graphics look. As soon as they start getting aggressive with the graphics, what we end up with is a really complex game that you really have yeah. to be a gamer to understand. And, and I think that Apple has the opportunity to do something probably a little bit more straightforward. I don't know if they will, but I think yeah. that that's that's where the soft point in the market is. There's games like Final Fantasy with a low barrier to entry. There's there's games. I find, but that's still a gamer's game. Zelda. I mean, it's, it's not Zelda. a per, it's not a it's not a mass game. You yeah, know, it's it's a mass gamer's game. You know, Final Fantasy, but it's not like I think that you know some something you know more arena based would be better. Yeah. Well, especially now that streaming platforms are becoming more serious, 
It's like so long as Apple just aggressively makes sure that whatever platform this gonna, is going to be streaming games, we will support it aggressively. They can mm -hmm. solve a lot of the problems that they're already having. I, I'm not sure if it's worthwhile for them to do all of the sweat equity that would be required to turn the Mac into a desirable AAA game platform. I'm not even sure if they can at this point. Right. Give, uh, give Go to Amazon, give them a couple hundred million dollars, say put New World on, uh, on the Mac, and uh, we'll be happy. But <laughs> Can it run Crisis? <laughs> <laughs> no one cares anymore. That's the good news. <laughs> uh, let's take a break. I do want to talk about Monterey, iOS 15.1. Share plays here. There's lots more to talk about. Yeah. Renee Ritchie, Andy Anako, Alex Lindsay. The MacBreak Weekly team is in the house. Our show today brought to you by AT&T Active Armor. Man, we live on our phones these days, don't we? Where, whether it's live streaming content, you know, uh, catch it. You could watch Dune on an iPhone. You can. Catching up with family on weekly video calls. Watching your favorite podcast. The last thing you want in the middle of all that is a fraudulent phone call. One of those car warranty ads. I don't need that. I don't. <laughs> That's why, thankfully, AT&T makes customer security a priority and helps block those pesky calls. It's not complicated. It's AT&T Active Armor. 24-7 proactive network security and fraud call blocking to help stop threats at no extra charge like that compatible devices service required visit att.com slash active armor for details um anything i should be aware of if i'm taking my uh my shiny new macbook to mexico i could i don't think power is an issue i i'm gonna love that battery life um, yeah, you just need, you need the magsafe if you want to charge like the quick charge the, the quick fast charge. charge but you oh, how do you like that magsafe by the way it's fine. I mean, like, I'm not as I'm not as devout to MagSafe as as Alex is. I like to be yeah. able to plug into any port. But you still um, can, right? I, I find that event. Yeah, I still can. Um, and I like that I have MagSafe as an option now too. It's great. Charges fast. It's really magnetic. Like it's strong magnetic. Uh, and if, I, I would have preferred an Ethernet on the on the power yeah brake block, yeah brake block. But I don't always every time get what I want. Well, I'm gonna uh, Lisa. Uh, Lisa saw that I have that little anchor dock with Ethernet on it, and she said. Can I upgrade to Monterey on your dock so it's faster? And I said, yes, be my guest. So I think I might be buying a few more docks uh, with Ethernet <laughs> ports on them to spread around the house. Monterey uh, on our uh, laptops was more than 12 gigabytes. Nice, yeah. hefty download. Uh, we did want to do it before we left the country. I mean, it's better to do it at home than try to do it on airport Wi-Fi. Uh, what do we or know? Some people would say, "Wait till you came home, Leo." I mean, like, like I'm yeah, not putting this out there. No, that's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> it's. But wait a minute. Now it's pretty reliable. Those right? people are drips. Don't listen to them. <laughs> totally. But I mean, like, still, like, like, if you're, if, if, if by chance, like, there was anything that just wasn't compatible, you didn't check for it right away. Oh God. Same thing with iOS 15.1. Even the watch got updated. I'm. Like, if you're hassled on didn't the edge work with it all of a sudden or something. Yeah, living on the edge. That would be bad. Uh, Monterey does not, besides new wallpaper, does not seem dramatically different. Some of the features that would have made a difference, uh, the ability to mm -hmm. control every Apple device, you know, with Universal your keyboard and mouse, would have been nice. SharePlay is in there, but I don't, I mean, for me, I don't know, some people, I guess if you're a grandparent, the FaceTiming a kid and watching Phineas and Ferb together. No, Leo, tech fun. support, like, uh, our lives are going to be so much... Like just well, I guess it's, it's not as big deal on on Mac OS. You're talking about Mac OS now, but just in general, like being able to 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 share play your your family through tech support stuff to me is going to save oh. you countless trips. Yeah. Oh, so it doesn't just have to be Netflix. You could do it with uh, just it's actually sharing. not Netflix. I think Netflix is the only. Oh, thing it doesn't work with Netflix. Yeah, oh, it doesn't funny. work with Netflix. And oh, some are coming later, like <laughs> Disney Plus is coming later, and some of the other stuffs yeah. coming later. But also like just sharing photos. Like you can do like remember when you came home from a from a trip and you could show everyone your slides. Oh, you could you bore them uh, remotely now. Oh, that's yes. exciting. Yeah, I think that, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a hard run. I, I'm hoping that it's the first step down this path and not, not the final step because it's, I, 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 I feel like it's such a lost opportunity for, to, to really scale that up a little bit. I, I think that we can share play it, but one of the things that would be really interesting is a much larger experience um, than 32 people. You know, I think about uh, a lot of things would be fun to be able to basically do that 
Um, and it might have to be a little bit more closed down, but you should be able to just subscribe and say, I want to watch it. We want to all want to watch at the same time um, mm -hmm. and let a thousand people watch it together, you know, watch something together. Um, and, the, and, and I think that those things would get, I think those actually would be easier to do in some ways if, because you could have, you know, real movie premieres, you know, that everyone's watching at the same time, they're tweeting, people are following, you know, there's a whole bunch of things that could happen. Um, you know, lining people back up again time-wise could be really, really interesting um, from a uh, acceptance. I think getting, watching this with my friends when the audio goes down and people talk is probably something I will almost never do. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But, the, but the question, but, the but question then you could say to them, what did he just say? What did she just say? <laughs> Who's that? I know. That's exactly why I won't do it. I have enough trouble, I have enough trouble with that's that gonna, on the couch right now. <laughs> it's going to be terrible in one way because it is so, like the, latent, like the latency is really good. The responsiveness, they automatically duck audio if you start talking. Oh, that's what and I'm talking also, about. like, like anybody just, can control it. Bad. No. Yeah, so like yeah. it's going to be every, but like that's what happens between the living room now, like, especially when you have the extended family over. It's like, why are you talking over everything? Who's got the remote? Why are you doing that? And now that's going to happen every time we watch. The movie. You're so funny. You're like me, Renee. I'm sitting. I'm watching the movie. I'm paying attention. Then all of a sudden, I hear TikTok audio coming from Lisa's iPhone <laughs> as she's going through. So the funny thing is, like, my god kids will actually ask to have the subtitles put on because they they can't stand us talking over the TV. Yes. Stop talking. Like, I'm watching. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I'm more, I, I'm more I, like I, you in that respect. There's a huge opportunity because we have all these. Co the, the reason that I'm really interested in it is we have all these copyright issues. We can't stream a movie, right, and all talk about it and have a discussion or or whatever. Maybe either even before or after or middle. Um, so the ability to cue everybody is something that would be uniquely something that Apple TV could do across the entire system of saying I, we all want to watch something at the same time. And and the thing that could be kind of interesting is that could be a you know, a director's commentary during it that's live <laughs> while you're watching it, if you're all timed, um, you know, or or just people being able to, you know, uh, tweet back and forth while they're watching a premiere uh, or, or text back and forth while they're doing it. It doesn't have to be them all being able to talk to each other. And I just think that you'd end up with more people actually using it than what it is here, because the way it's implemented, as we said before, is I'm like, I don't think I'd want to watch it that way, you know, um, and, and, and then you have to tie everybody in. I think that it's going to be a... It's, it's a really difficult thing. And in general, FaceTime is not, I mean, I love FaceTime audio, which I use all the time, but uh, the FaceTime interface and process for video is not something that I, I'm, I, I love Apple, but not, not that part. <laughs> so. but, but, but it's a, but it's a, but it's a great resource. It's a, it's one of those great features where you put it out there and see how people take advantage of it. Because this is, as Renee yeah. said, well, the, the first thing I think I thought of was not necessarily uh, fly by wire, helping my, helping uh, family and friends mm -hmm. uh, through, uh, through tech support, but that's something you can do with it. And also I, I like, I like your suggestion of having like a communal watch event, even yeah. if it's not like, even if it's just like everybody is watching at the same time, so they're still they're still commenting live via Twitter. Right. They're still commenting whatever, but not, but that's probably something that's best left for uh, an, a, a third party. That's probably not an OS level sort of thing. But you but the thing is is that the problem is if you leave it to a third party, you can't you can't get to the shows because of the copyright issues. And so right. you, you what you want to do is you want to have that something that's accessible by HBO Max. Like cause if if a you know if we did that or Justine did this or or Marquez Browning did this or Renee did this or, or, or Andy, if, if any one of us did this at different levels, we'd end up with hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of people wanting to watch it all at the same time, you know, and, and then suddenly everybody would be using that product. And I think that, but, uh, it, you know, and so I, I just think that'd be really interesting and it has yeah. to be done at the OS level in TV OS level to make that actually work because then any app that's inside of it could then be queued to start at a certain time. I, I hear you, but if I'm but if Apple's going to take a, take on the responsibility of uh, coordinating and serving that kind of data for free, and I, I acknowledge it's not about serving necessarily uh, serving the streams themselves. It could be just doing synchronization data. But if they're going to do that, bring it, bring it, bring us bring us messages for Android. Like that's usually the reason why. In addition to anti-competitive reasons, this is the reason why Apple is given a pass for not supporting uh, not porting uh, messages to Android because then some they'll. They'll also have to support all the traffic, and someone really has to kind of pay for that. That's I don't, I don't know. know. I mean, they would the, the, a million people watching something, one. a million people watching it wouldn't be a big traffic thing for Apple, though. I mean, you know, like it's, cause it's just cute. It's says, not. It's says, not a live says, stream. Says the person who doesn't has it says the person doesn't have to pay for it at Apple. It's like well, no, no, but I mean, they're, I, you're, I, you're I, already. I understand, I understand your knowledge. I'm just. I'm just saying that I'm not. I'm not sure that it would be a perfect thing for Apple to try to attempt. 
Well, they're, they're already, I mean, you're already down. It's not like it's streaming live. It's, it's not a live stream off of Akamai. This is a, you know, basically you're queuing everybody up to start watching it the way they, if they were all watching right. the, 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 the thing of foundation or, or, or whatever. The, the big thing it would do is, and of course, I don't think Apple would do anything with Android because I think that this would, this would have a lot of people want to get an Apple TV. If the Apple TV support, or if all the Apple devices did this, it would be, you know, and you started having the director of Dune, you know, is going to be on there right afterwards to talk about it, or we can tweet, you know, whatever that is. Uh, there'd be an incredible amount of pressure um, to, in some in some cases, to you know, jump in and 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 buy hardware. <laughs> so so the you know because I think that so it, it be, Renee, you it, talked about uh, the spatial audio sounding good. How does the voice isolation uh, sound? Does that work okay? Have you tried that? Uh, yeah, I mean that's more as far as I understand it. That's th those are like the inverse features of the AirPods. Like the AirPods have noise canceling right. and they have a transparency mode. And what this does is either let like you want to share the party with everybody, so we want to make sure you don't miss like everyone in the room. This will let it really get like wide audio. And then if you want to isolate on just you, it'll cancel out as much of the background as possible. It's hard for me to test because I don't, I don't know what it sounds like to other side, and I'm not talking to people who right. are not. Um, right. That that uh, tuned into it, right. but it, it dramatically cuts down the noise. At least we don't use FaceTime on our shows, so I guess we won't know. But uh, that's a nice feature of other uh, products, and I think it'd be Apple could probably do it very well. Uh, another controversial feature, uh, Safari. They kind of backed down on a lot of the Safari changes, didn't they, or no? Yeah, they, they well, they gave you an option. So right now you have you in the latest versions you have two options. One is basically as shown at WWDC, where they have that new compact layout, and your tabs are indistinguishable from a re, from address bars, and it, basically <laughs> everything that some people like cosmetically, but I really do not like functionally. And then you have the other option, which is to go back to the previous version of Safari, basically where you the tabs look like blessed tabs. Is the compact um, tab bar the default? Know. Am I gonna? Want to go in? I don't know because I switched. It immediately yeah, away. turn it off right away. <laughs> I don't know what they're going to ship with. Yeah, so uh, well, I'll, I'll let you know. Hopefully, it'll preserve your settings. Like I don't yeah. want to. I, nobody should be surprised by that. Yeah, yeah. But but what a great illustration of the problems of innovation that sometimes I get. I and a lot of other people give Apple crap for saying. Hey, at least give us options, but I wonder if we would have found out that this uh, this menu bar change was uh, excuse me, the address bar change was actually better if they simply said. We're not, no, you don't get an option. You can't turn it off if you want, because uh, because you see it, it doesn't work for you for the first ten or fifteen minutes. You te you turn it off, and then you never think about think about it again. I, no, I, do, I don't I do think, think so. Was, I, I think, think it was the wrong choice. But there's a semantic. A you want to make a semantic distinction between controls that are part of the software you're using and controls that are part of the web page. Yes. And what this yeah. does is it blends the two together, so you just don't know. It, oh yeah. It's no. if you look at it right I now, John. Show tell. my screen. If you look at it right now. The idea is that this heaps and woods screen is the 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 look and feel is spread throughout. You kind of know that these tabs are not part of it, but that's not yeah. always but if the you case. Have two tabs, you oh, no, can't I'm, tell. Like I can't tell what the active tab is still. Like I, I've been using yeah, it yeah, for yeah. three months, and I still can't tell what the active. And I still I, all the time. Right. I think it's a fun tab and type. It's a fundamental it's flaw bar. because we do need to make the distinction between controls that are part of the browser and right. and, the, and the website. And so oh, I think. You know that's no, the no. Key. I, I, I'm I'm 100 with you. Also, the 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 web browser it's an app canvas. It's not a web browser at this point. That's you need exactly to know right. The UI. And you're absolutely right. But what I, what I was what what makes me think sometimes is that let's say that oh, Apple had. Yeah. Let, 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 no, I'm saying that giving at, at people the very a beginning, choice. Right. I understand. Yeah. Well, at the, at the at the very beginning that the, uh, when they designed the math, they said no, we're not even going to give you a control keys or function keys because right. we put function keys on the keyboard. Then programmers would say we're not going to bother to learn how to how to program for a mouse. Users would say we're not even going to bother to learn how to use a mouse we're going to go with control you know c control slash whatever to to bold face something it's just it's it uh, as much crap as i and other people sometimes give apple for you know making not giving people uh, options for change sometimes it's like well at least give the at least we're going to force you to at least give it a chance before we we, we retreat with our tail tucked between our legs but at least you know allow, allow us to abuse our marketability to at least get you thinking about maybe this is a better way of doing things 
I so, think they panicked. Like I think they legitimately panicked and thought they were going to lose a lot of users if they shipped yeah. it with that as yeah. the the new default. Yeah. Like my understanding is that there were two camps when people like HI proposed this idea, and there were some people like, yes, like the the browser market is ripe for innovation, and other people like it is absolutely, but it can't violate every law in our own human interface guideline yeah. while you're innovating. You got to innovate forward, not innovate innovate. Like Safari's whole yeah. motto is zero regression. And then my guess is they saw the pushback, uh, and the executives at Apple do like to test the betas and somebody called and said, where are my tabs? And they said, well, sir. And they're like, why aren't you on a plane yet? And uh, yeah. So like I, for instance, I'm using Firefox on Linux right now, but if I hit F11, I can expose all the Firefox controls. And if I hit it again, yeah. I can go full screen. Now this is what Apple's kind of offering you is this idea that the web page is, you know, is, is all. And I think this is a good, a better way of doing it. So if I want the very clearly different controls from the browser, I can have them. Yeah. But when I'm showing you the page, I don't want to see them. Anyway, and enough tabs of that. Look like tabs. Focus is here. First thing Lisa said is, what the hell is this? And I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> She'd probably like it, actually. I like, said I it's like the same as on your people. phone. And so maybe that helps, I guess. Well, it's going to be like, there's going to be people, like there are certain people who like to do apps. They like lists. They like being organized. And they're going to love the ability to have all these different modes with different home screens, different apps, different people that can contact us. I know some people who are like, I hate people in my family. I don't want them to know that. But I made a whole mode just called, like, like was a bad family. And they just can't get through to me on a daily <laughs> basis, which I'm not, I'm not supporting, but I'm saying I understand. Uh, and then you're going to have people like me who are like, um, these are basically gym memberships. You know, you feel good about yourself because you have them, but they're, there's so much to set up and so much to manage. They become an extra job. And I already feel like I have too many jobs. So I'm okay with like binary. Yeah. I like disturb. do not disturb. I just turn on do not disturb. And yeah. I do like DND. I think that's really nice to have this. This is just like on the phone. So if you've used iOS 15, you're familiar with it. You can have different kinds of, uh, focus modes. You can have them, I presume tied to time of day or what you're doing yeah. and that kind of things, so where you are, uh, so forth. So I think, you know, <laughs> my, my notifications are all set to, um, they can happen anytime between 9.59 and 10 o'clock at night. Yes, me too. <laughs> the, the, all my notifications are over there. Me and, too. And if, you're, if I'm actually up, it's, it's, I feel like the computer's like, oh my gosh, there's so many things I have to tell you. Like, like, like all these things happen yeah. today. And then, I always know oh my when it's time to get out of bed because my phone starts honking at me. Uh, no. All the notifications <laughs> for the night no. have come in, so... Alex, just a, just a just a question. I'm entering without judgment. Like, if mm -hmm. part of the house were on fire, would your wife decide? You know what? I need to go into the office hours live stream in order to let her make sure he knows that the that the that the house is on fire. The, the, the house on fire is really the only thing that I'm okay with. You know, like like so, so usually well, there's a like a feature for that because right. you can now turn on status in messages. Uh, so it'll say Alex has his notifications silenced. And for tr and there is a way for truly urgent messages to get through that, just as there is on the phone. Yeah, but you could turn that off too if you want. <laughs> I, my phone, my phone is a little bit more like if, you, if you're a contact, you can usually at least it'll I'll at least see your name pop up. If you're not a contact, I don't I don't see it at all. I don't even know you called. Um, but if the um, uh, but my but my mom my my mom and my wife and my kids can they have a, they have a pretty direct route to me. But that's that's about it. Yeah, it's so the kind of cool thing is, so um, I can see on my phone that I'm in work mode. I have a little work notification right. popped up because that's the work focus. Now that will automatically, right, Renee, go to all my devices, including my, my yeah. Mac. So everything will be in work mode, which may or may not be your desired effect. But <laughs> that's the uh, that's the idea. If you're in work mode, the you're ecosystem, in work mode Leo. It's an ecosystem. You've been ecosystem. <laughs> yep. Quick Notes is here. Uh, we've had it on the iPad, and the uh, I've loved it. It's now here on the Mac as well. How do you? How, I tried dragging up from the left screen, and I realized, oh, it's not a touch device. How do you activate? <laughs> My pencil doesn't work on it either. When I tried, yeah, I tried, and I tried, and I thought, oh crap, it's not. <laughs> it's not it feels like iPad. a pencil feature. Like it's just so organic to pencil. But I'm like, yeah. I, I like that it's there. Like I almost do all my note taking on uh, on the iPad now because it's just so organic with the pencil and typing and everything. But then I like that it's on the iPhone so I can quickly triage things on the go. And then I like that it's on the Mac because the Mac is still best for mass data entry. So if I have to sit there and take a ton of notes, I'm still going to want to do that on a Mac. Yeah. Uh, you just there's a hot corner like the bottom right is a hot corner. So you, so bring you move your mouse the mouse down there. there. Okay. You'll see a little edge. Yeah. But you have to turn that. Edge pops it looks up like you have to turn that on. It's not on by default. Mine uh, just showed up, but I don't know. That okay. Might, that mine started working. Yeah. Okay. So I'll look at my hot corners, uh, and there. What's nice is they're attached to the app that you use, so they're you know that's yeah. that's kind of cool. 
For as long as Apple's around, our notes will persist. Well, as long as Apple's interested in making <laughs> yeah. new notes, our notes yeah. will, will persist. Yeah. They spend, I, I think that they, they spend a lot of effort on notes. You know, like it, it's constantly progressing. It's, it's not a, it's a pretty powerful app that's kind of just hidden in there. I use it all day, every day. <laughs> so notes nice. is like where I, I literally write my articles in notes because it means that any device that I have, have, you know, stuff in it and, and I'm cutting and pasting stuff to it and I have folders and process. And, and so when you start actually taking advantage of notes, there's an enormous amount of tools uh, that are in it. My biggest complaint is mostly that I can't draw over top of text. It's modal, you know, like I when you're you can now. on your iPad. Can you? Because I, I coun't. I, I, I thought so. I tested it in the least. I think that's least, one of the new features. Okay, that I mm, I'll have to try it. I, yeah, try that because that's that's been my number one thing with notes is just that I start typing something and I want them to live in the same. I want my drawing on the iPad to be in the same place as my text, not in a window I above or below. I want plain text mode. I want like be able to press a button and get yeah. plain text. Frederico yeah. Vitici yeah. in his uh, review of shortcuts on uh, Mac Stories says it's still a rough around the edges, but yeah. that's interesting. I think that's, that's kind of common. Yeah. I mean, rough around the edges yeah. is common for the uh, a dot one dot two release of of a new OS. Uh, Apple, I, I feel like Apple the, never gets into its stride until this is why I, I tend to be very slow about the upgrades. Is that I feel like Apple gets into its stride at around February because that's when they stop thinking about it and they're thinking about the next thing. So, <laughs> yeah. so like February, they're like, okay, we're done with that one. Now they're now completely thinking about the next next version. We're yep. not we're not going to add anything to this yep. one. Yet. We're done. Universal thought, control I, still not here. They have to add that. Do we have uh, any idea? Yeah. Did they tell yeah. you, Renee? Later uh, this year. Later this year is all they're saying. It says available later this year's fall. But oh, that, this fall. Okay. That goes well, through December fall 20th. Fall goes to the 21st of December. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> now, does yeah, that, that, is that, that was, all devices? Like, if you had, like, three Macs, could you run it across the mall, or is it, is it just the Yeah, iPads? as long as you have More one, than one Mac, Mac in your chain. So it it's, says it's a limited. single keyboard yeah. and mouse or trackpad now works seamlessly between your Mac and iPad. They'll even connect to more than one Mac or iPad. Mm -hmm. Move your mm -hmm. cursor from your Mac to your you iPad. Type Mac. In your Mac. You can't do just iPad and you can't start with an iPad. It has to start with a Mac. So the Mac is like the, the control hub and then you can add well, one I, or two other Macs, one or two other I iPads or one Mac and one iPad. That's pretty cool. I, I, yeah. My situation is I have, I have four Macs on my in my, in my office and I kind of do want to just go over it and I've been thinking about getting Synergy for it um, but, but I kept on feeling like, well, if this is really going to work across all of them, I might just wait. Yeah. That, that was that was a big disappointment for me. That's that's why I didn't rush to upgrade just yet. I'm going to do it like after this show, but like that, that, that I actually already have like a, an iPad iPad Pro nice. stand like on my desk waiting for it because I do anticipate that being like a game changer. It was act, it was actually one of the reasons why uh, I bought the I, I paid extra money for a big iPad Pro to begin with. I don't think that 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 feature hadn't been announced yet, but the idea of using this as a complementary display for my Mac seemed like it would make perfect sense, particularly given the quality of the display. So yeah, I, I, that's that's the one feature that I'm hoping that Apple really delivers on because that could be, I wouldn't say a game changer, but that is one of the, it's one of the things, one of the reasons why you buy Apple products and why sometimes you buy Apple products, even when they're competing products by other makers. It's like, I know that this is going to cost a lot of money for this iPad, but I know that the value is going to increase as Apple continues to come up with new way, new ways to integrate it with other stuff that I'm using. If you have good speakers on your uh, Mac, you might be glad to know you can use your Mac now as an AirPlay speaker, uh, or you can AirPlay content uh, to your Mac. So your Mac is just like a TV. Can you just imagine... Like you have your your new MacBook Pro with its uh, XDR display, and then right next to that, over uh, control uh, or over sidecar, you have your iPad Pro with an XDR display. And now all of a sudden, we've got commercialized Pro level color grading and and yeah. pipeline work and everything just sitting there on your on your travel table. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Uh, live text and photos. That's that's neat. So even photos I've taken in the past, I can now interact with the text. Uh, in the photo, click links and and all those image layer PDFs, like the PDFs where they were too lazy to use an actual text oh, layer, which I just love basically that. scan the document. <laughs> oh, all of that I text is that. unlocked yeah. without you paying a fortune for an OCR app and yeah. running it through and wasting all your time. Nice. Yeah. I hope we. I hope that we do start seeing some shortcuts uh, stuff happening. By the way, um, there is integration with a number of apps. Uh, Vitici has twenty seven apps that are already uh, shortcut yeah. enabled on the Mac, so that's good. That's good. Um, Every time we talk about shortcuts, I just want to say all I want is shortcuts with nodes. You know, that you can just sit there. Yeah. And go, I want this. Yeah. All, I want yeah. all these things. I just want to tie all these these things together and just build a nodal infrastructure of what that looked like. There's no reason Every somebody couldn't shortcuts. write that as a third party app. I think. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm it could. It just that would be it'd be harder. I mean, like to to do. I mean, you could do with shortcuts. What I want is really something that sits between shortcuts and Swift. You know, where you're basically programming and you can make it an app and you could really turn it into something. I think that there's a huge opportunity for people to solve problems without having to write code. I was I was going to say that was one that was one of the big evolutions of AppleScript, where they allowed basically allowed you to use X, Xcode interface tools to uh, interface builder to create interfaces and then wire it into uh, your Apple scripts. That right. if it, also because the uh, shortcuts are a wonderful gateway drug to programming, and the yeah. exact the, the, the exact right way to get someone int introduced to programming is not oh well here is this wonderful uh, wonderful uh, eighteen part course and how to uh, and how to do Fortran. It's mm -hmm. It's all about what do you, I really wish there were a simpler way to do this. Oh, wait, sh I, I've been meaning to try out shortcuts. Hey, look, I've done I've done this really simple thing that fixes it. And then two months later, you've made it so complicated, gloriously complicated, that it's collapsed 25 minutes worth of work into one button press. And now the ability to simply feed that, uh, that shortcut with fields, with pop-ups, with a modern interface would just absolutely turn people into commercial developers and really well, make, make great stuff for, for companies, great works for communities. And I think I think from a from a monetary perspective, from a market perspective, you could have the ability to compile all of these things into an app that you could sell on the app store with a node, nodal compositor that's right. really building. You're really programming an, a, an app. You know, like this is it's what it kind is. Of what Playgrounds and when is I, doing right? Uh, kind of, but but being able to have, but Playgrounds again is still like too much typing. You know, the yeah. the the thing is, is that at they're, some point the you typing convert the shortcuts into the into, uh, into well, Swift, and that's not necessarily necessary. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the I'm thing sorry. is, is you yeah. could you could be typing, you could be building a nodal. We did this in back in Shake days. You would build a whole bunch of things, and you basically, and even with Motion, we you build something really complex. Then you say, this is these are the the attributes I'm going to expose to the user to use. These are the dials or whatever I want to put in there, and then you compile it into one thing. And that could be something that you could turn into an app, and then literally sell it on the app store. Now, on the other end of that, you could have people developing nodes that that you could use. You know, you could buy those nodes. You know. And and put them into your apps and so on and so forth. And so there's a lot of places that you could, you know, let people really, uh, really, because there's a lot of people that have ideas that aren't programmers, <laughs> but could think logically. And and shortcuts is a great gateway to that. But there's a huge gap between shortcuts and Swift, and that gap could be filled by something that's like a note, you know, a, you know, a visual programmer, programming um, interface. New Globe, Apple has Sherlocked Replogal. <laughs> You, get, <laughs> you have a globe, okay? New transit features, new map features, privacy, blah, blah, blah. iCloud Plus. Wait a minute. We didn't have that before? We had that before, right? Or maybe we not. We had Plus technology. Yeah. Uh, iCloud Private Relay, they hide my email. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but we, I think we had that already. Um, and so much more. So much more. Basically, you used to pay for extra storage. Like you had iCloud and you could pay for extra storage. Now when you play for extra storage, you also get private relay and the other features. And they just bundled that together as iCloud Yeah, but that's Plus. not new with Monterey. Subscribe. Haven't I had that all along? Or private maybe? relay is new with Monterey. Oh, it is. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, was I that's getting it on use, iOS? Like, intermediary servers. Oh, yes. I, I was. Okay. So this is the yeah. first well, time. Well, no, with. iOS 15. It's, it's new this year. Like private relay. Yeah, yeah. They announced it at WWDC of this year. Right. Uh, and now it's available on the desktop as well as uh, on mobile. Okay. That's their answer to app tracking transparency for the internet because app tracking transparency is bound to your device and to the apps, but they can still follow you around the internet. And this is like, well, I would rather you don't follow me around the internet either. Thank right, you. Right. So turn that on, uh, I guess, in, uh, in your settings. Uh, I'm sure it's not on by default, or is it? Maybe it is. But if you if you turn it on, Mark might change the name of Facebook. So just think about the consequences. Of That's that. going to happen whether you turn it on or not. I'm sorry. There was a <laughs> there was a, we read it on uh, on uh, Twitter on Sunday. There was a great article uh, featuring like 20 possible names for Facebook, like uh, Facebook McFacey or uh, something like that. <laughs> but uh, did you hear him last night? He's like, Facebook is they're losing kids. They're losing the kids, Leo. Yeah. And they're going to make a oh, massive push no. to turn Facebook into a more youth friendly product. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Nobody knows what that means they're, yet, but they're 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 down with the youths apparently. Oh yes, yes. hello fellow the, kids. The TikTok is just yes. compelling. Welcome to your new social network. Henry's not making cooking videos on Facebook, Leo. That's no, the he's not. Isn't that interesting? You're no. right. <laughs> yeah, all well, he's making them on Instagram, so they kind of get him that way.
Well, because Reels is the answer. That's what he said. He said, like, like they asked him about, like, you're stealing Snap, you're stealing TikTok. And he's like, we think there are several compelling formats in the social space <laughs> stories was one of them. Jeez. And we think Reels is going to be another one of those. Uh, He's got to be steamed that now that it's almost impossible to simply acquire uh, acquire audiences that they weren't able to cultivate on their own. Because yeah. the, the next time they try to buy something, it just ain't going to happen, Chief. 15.1 is out. It is pretty much mostly to get share play working across the board. That's why it came out day and date with uh, uh, Matt Monterey, right? Is there anything else, 15.1? I'm sure there's some security updates. And it looks like yeah. some small video components as well. What's that? What does that do? I don't know. I saw it when I hit the when I hit update. I saw like some pro video or I don't know. Pro oh yeah, ProRes. Pro pro oh, it adds. Pro oh, yeah. oh, I some forgot. Numbers. You're 13. I'm just holding up my 12 as if I had one. <laughs> You're 13. This is 13. <laughs> You're 13. running for right now. <laughs> we'll add ProRes video capture support. So we that was that thing we talked about, but wasn't out yet. Now it's in. So yeah. Yeah. I would expect you immediately uh, to go out and shoot a film, a uh, feature film, Alex. That's my big plan. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Just can I can <laughs> yeah. I suggest uh, no firearms? Seems like a bad can idea. Can you do Dune 2 because oh, it'll be man. faster than waiting for Legendary? What do yeah. you you probably have some experience with firearms on set, right Alex? Or no? I have I have some experience. Yeah, cuz I know you're you love guns. Uh, and you have some <laughs> You love him. You love him. He love, loves love No, guns. he has some experience with firearms and I grew up in the, I grew up in rural Pennsylvania. Yeah. We have experience with <laughs> yeah. firearms. Yes. That is, that's kind of like, that, that's kind of like growing up. But have you up. used that's them in production? Tuesday. You haven't used them in production, have you? We have. We have, absolutely. Yeah. So there's there's a lot of protocols that look like they weren't followed. Yeah. You know, during that, during that, you know, so. But you normally uh, would have a, a armorer on set, a prop master, an AD assistant everybody director. Everybody checks All it. of which who so, are very careful. Yeah. Because I, think that I, I didn't realize how careful they were. They're super careful with this stuff. Well, it's the thing you, that's their job. That's their only job. Like, this is your job is you have one job and that's to keep people from, you know, hurting each other with the weapons, you know? And so, you know, so the, um, and so there's a lot of things that are, that are done even without a film set that when you hand someone a gun, you show them that it's empty. Right. You know, like, like literally, uh, you know, in, in general, uh, you know, again, I grew up in the country. When you hand someone a gun, it's empty. Like, like, you know, like you show it to them, like yeah, nothing in there, nothing, you know? It, and so see? like, there's nothing yeah. in it. You can put, you let, let them load the gun, you know? Yeah. And so, so the fact that, you know, the idea that you would, you would hand someone a gun and say it's cold and it's cold not means that it's terrifying, it's crazy. Like terrifying. Well, the fact that you, you know, the, the, and I've seen on set where the armorer says that, and then the AD says that's that. right. Like, and he looks at it. Yeah. Like, there's there's a whole bunch of layers of. It I shouldn't had, be something that's everyone missed. It should be maybe one person misses it, but it doesn't get to the actor yeah. without that. And it sounds like now that the I guess the rumor, and we're talking about rumors right now that, that I guess they're out what they call plinking. You know, they're out yeah. shooting the actual oh, at gun lunch during lunch before before the a couple hours before, which is I don't even know how that's. I don't. They're I, supposed to be locked I, up. I, well, yeah, no one's supposed to. You know, like. Anyway, so I, I don't I don't want to say anything else because yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't exactly. we don't know enough it's about a tra it. It's a terrible tragedy, but just a, yeah. Uh, what, what for me as a as a complete naive, uh, I just assumed oh they they have blanks they <laughs> they're just throwing them I around on the set and all now. that stuff. I didn't even think blanks. I thought that everything was done CGI. Yeah, now. yeah, but they're those are the problem, they're real the firearms problem. firing real blanks. Uh, one hopes, and even then that's dangerous. You're well, supposed the, to say twenty people have gotten hurt. Like, there's yeah, you still have to hold the powder in there, so there's a cap. Right. You know, there's a cap in the bullet that holds the powder in, and it's going to come out. At, now there's ways of doing it. The, the problem with not using a gun that has blanks is the re there's no recoil, so it just right. it looks you know it, it, when you're trying you can try to do you know to do the movement, but it's not the same. And so yeah. people who want that kind of realistic look want the blank because it's going to force the gun. Yeah, to there's recoil. a famous film set accident where blank uh, actually killed an actor because yeah. he was fooling around with it. Right. So it's not, it's, yeah, but there, but there's such a, I didn't realize how there was a, a number of good posts. Uh, Reddit had an excellent post from an armorer talking about all of the procedure. Right. And I had no idea how careful people were. No, absolutely. Were that, I'm glad the same post it. That, yeah. If it's the same post that I read, it's about, I, even when there are blanks, I weigh all the blanks yes. to find out. He this, weighs this them. One, this, mm. this yes. one, this one has a, this one has a larger charge than the other. So we're only going to use it for blanks fired in, yeah. off in the distance. Yeah. Here's the one that is, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. 
it's, you like to see that kind of you like to see that kind well, of uh, I am the god on the set when it comes to guns. You will not. Uh, there's no greater authority when it comes to this gun than I, the armorer, who's also, responsible for people's lives. He also said, and most of the actors are liberals, so they are scared of guns anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was kind of a funny aside. <laughs> no, a, 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 just a, I'll, a, 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 we'll, we'll be we spent so much time talking about Dune, but there was uh, I, one of the things that makes me real gets re me really interested in live performances things like safety that's on stage that cannot be apps cannot be in any way visible to the audience that the way that uh, uh, I, I know people who have been like doing productions on Broadway and they've walked me through exactly how much communication there is between the person who has to uh, has to take a step off a high platform while they're clipped into wires and how much communication there is between the backstage that person who was on stage all the while that and that person and the rest of the show if there are six or seven failure points or rather or go or no go points that are built into this all the way to the point where okay the person who's on that platform believes that they are clipped in but they still have to they're still the ones who decide to step off or not so they can signal in a way that no one in the audience would ever see that okay i don't like this we're not doing this we go to plan b of the staging where i don't actually jump off the platform it's it's amazing the level of detail that goes into this and how they managed to pull it off without anybody being aware of how much conversation is going on yeah uh reddit slash r slash best of if you want to uh, read yeah. that uh, post it was quite eye-opening uh, iOS 15.1 then. SharePlay, uh, ProS Video Capture, we've said it all. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure there's some other stuff. Um, I guess, and I guess you probably uh, want it. Um, oh, there is one other thing I did want and used immediately. I put my vaccination card in my Apple wallet. Yay. So, uh, and it worked beautifully. I guess I shouldn't, hold, I don't know, should I not hold, I'll put my finger over the QR code. But it's cool. Yeah. It's a it's red, and uh, I presume that that's going to be. I can use that that because of the QR code, uh, at you know, if going through a gate at an airport or at a concert or wherever. So yeah. that's great. That's in your wallet. Um, in the state of California, uh, you you actually go to a website, you get the QR code, and then uh, yeah. it was interesting. It said on the actual web page add this to your apple wallet so they knew immediately yeah. that's good that, that's it that's a big deal i'm, I'm going to i'm going to see uh, my first live performance pre since pre-covid and uh, unfortunately my android phone doesn't have that kind of capability and also in the state of new york they don't honor that, that i don't that's the other have thing they have to honor it yeah yeah, yeah, you have to be a, a state resident to participate in their like statewide passport program. Right. So you have to. I had to download the Clear app, the same one they use for uh, passport control, uh, speediness uh, through airports, and it's it's it really does make you think about how we're going to have to need this sort of infra infrastructure going forward. It also kind of makes you think a little bit about why people's concerns about uh, the limit about the ostracization possibilities of such a passport that it could have an effect on society that if it becomes really really easy for a gatekeeper to say you have to have these following vaccinations and you have to have these following papers in order to be allowed admittance into this venue it might be in, in the future uh, two or three years from now it might be well you don't have a flu uh, vaccination and for that reason our our insurance people have required us to install this app and make sure that only vaccinated people have entered so it, uh, it as as always when you make something easy to do you also make it easier for bad people to do bad things with it so it kind of gives you a, uh, gives me a little bit of a philosophical beard stroking moment even as i'm thinking thank god i don't have to like produce an id and this 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 thing in my this piece of paper in my wallet thank god i can just as usual just flash a qr code and be flashed right through apple doesn't specifically mention any uh, security updates uh for uh 15.1 but i i'm gonna guess there are some there are some bug fixes um there's new shortcut abilities a new collection of games that lets you pass the time with siri i can't wait to find out what that is um would you like to play a game would you oh, like to 20 questions <laughs> 20 questions support for live text in the camera app on the ipad that's nice so there are a lot of new features in uh, 15 one have we covered what was a very big day today <laughs> i think we had a lot to talk about 
Except the AirPods. You put the AirPods out of the game. I'm not talking about those. <laughs> Don't buy those. Well, do you like them? I mean, uh, I guess it's somewhere in between the AirPods and the AirPods Pro, right? It's... Yeah, almost exactly in between. And like that's important for some people because, you know, I love the little silicon tips because my ears, they just, they're mangled. That stuff doesn't stay in, but other people really hate them because they find, they don't like anything in the air canal or they find it really painful to have silicon tips. So these have like the OG ear pods. Johnny Ive measured 3 billion ears to find the Platakian ideal for 80% of humanity that some people actually legitimately prefer. So you get that, you get, you don't get noise canceling or transparency mode. Uh, or the voice assist feature, but you do get spatial audio, which I think is a big part of Apple's plans, especially for audio augmented reality. And you get that uh, dynamic EQ system uh, for like 180 bucks, which is cheaper than the AirPods Pro. And they kept the second generation AirPods around for 130 bucks, so the cheapest AirPods ever. I think it's just, it's a good solid update to Apple's line. Not a fan, so I'm not going to talk about it. But I'm glad you mentioned it. <laughs> I'll, I'll throw them out the window right I just, now. I, 179 yeah. bucks is so expensive, and there are very uh, credible uh, choices at a lower price. So yeah. The thing is, like, they, like, yeah, for music, like, not, not worth it at all. Like, you, you can get uh, Anchor. There's a whole bunch of brands that offer really good music experiences. Apple is just, they want to put all this technology, like, they want to pay for an H1 core. Like, two yeah, of I understand. Those and everyone and yeah. all the sensors and everything. So and down the road, the that technology. might really be a big deal. I mean, I, yeah. we've talked, we've been, we talked about OTC uh, hearing aids. Apparently, uh, President Biden is going to really put the screws to the FDA to stop delaying yeah. this. Uh, that will be a yeah. big deal um, when you get hearing aids over the counter. I think the AirPods would make an excellent uh, choice for a lot of people. They already have sort of have that capability. Um, but also well, for uh, the AR, you know, audio these AR. These are not just optical. So like uh, the traditional AirPods were optical. Like they were, Sorry, were proximity-based. And you right. could, it would know when it was in your ear. Now they're optical, so they can actually differentiate skin tones from other things. So they'll, they'll really know they're in your ear, not just like you put them on a table and all of a sudden it's playing music again, which is super <laughs> annoying. Yeah. Um, let's take a little break and get your picks of the week, fellers. How about that? What do you say? We were I'm up for it. Are you? You ready? You ready? I'm really keen let's for it. this. We were talking about uh, streaming a million people watching your FaceTime <laughs> video. Actually, there is a way to do that affordably and easily with Cashfly. Cashfly is our CDN. They've been innovating content delivery since 1999. We've been using them for over a decade. Uh, Matt Levine, one of the founders of Cashfly, came to me early on, like uh, when we were first struggling with how to get these podcasts to you, before we even do a video, when it was just audio. And he said, let me help. And we've been using Cashfly ever since. When we came to him and said, hey, get ready, we're going uh, to be doing video. They said, we're ready. And man, it's been a great relationship. No 3 a.m. phone calls saying the CDN is down. Nothing like that. And, uh, you know, you may not notice it as a listener or a viewer, but there's never an issue getting our content because Cashfly servers are close to you. They're the fastest CDN for th global throughput with over 50 points of presence. Now they're doing ultra low latency streaming. And this is very cool. We're not talking the WebRTC solution that's let you down in the past. Stream delays less than one second, they have a great HTML5 player you can embed anywhere with a really nice SDK, websites, applications, mobile devices, any other platform. Uh, their low latency network means your video streams will come quickly to your endpoint, no matter where you have viewers, regardless of what continent they're on. And you can, with Cashfly's ultra low latency video platform, deliver to more than a million users concurrently, as well as ingest thousands of synchronous streams. RTMP, RTMPS, SRT, ultra low latency SLDP and HLS. There's a solution waiting for you. Go to twit.cashfly.com. Bring your uh, usage trends and your uh, CDN bill and let Cashfly show you how they could save you as much as 20% and give you better performance. And by the way, the best support I can vouch for this 24 7, 365 day a year priority support. They're always there when we need them. A 100% SLA. And up to five times faster than other CDNs. Cashfly is just the best. We thank them so much for supporting what we do here. And we invite you to give them a try. Find out more. No pressure, no sales, just information. Twit.cashfly.com. Thank you, Cashfly. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, all right. Renee Ritchie, why don't you kick things off with your pick of the week? 
So this is a little homage homage to the anniversary of the iPods, which I think is 20. 20, 20 years. 20, it was 20 years, October 20 years. 25th, 2001. Dean, Tony Fidel, uh, you know, Steve Jobs. So yeah, everyone get together and put a thousand pocket, a thousand, a songs, thousand in songs in your pocket, baby. I got it right yeah, here. You, it's and unrestored the, condition, baby. Uh, we all got them. And, <laughs> but, but we all know that the greatest innovation of the iPod generation was really iPod socks. <laughs> and that Apple has done nothing, has done nothing to bring that innovation oh, forward. Yes, they put out a cleaning cloth. You can get a $20 cleaning <laughs> cloth if you really want to, but you can't get socks. Well, Where's the Hermes this sock? This problem has been solved by the aftermarket. Yeah, <laughs> where's my Hermes sock? Uh, yeah. <laughs> a nice leather sock, sock. Yes. yes, just what you need. I'm gonna break, but you can now get AirPods, not socks, but you can get AirPod beanies. We call it a toque in Canada. <laughs> uh, you, you can get, you can get uh, little beanies, little socks <laughs> for your AirPods. They are so cute. They are adorable. I saw it. Um, it popped up on Twitter this morning. I'm blanking on the vendor's name. I have it in front of me here. But I will it's just, pull it up it for so you because I got it on the. I have your link. Native, Native Union. Union. Native Union. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Native Union. It is. They're so adorable, Leo. Like, and they're in all the colors that Apple refuses to give us for AirPods. You know, Aww. AirPods. For some reason, every consumer Apple product, the colors are all at the consumer end, and the pros get your choice of black or white. But for AirPods, only the Macs have colors. Everything else is just that one iconic white color. But they're saying nay. They're saying literally nay to Apple, and they're giving us. Uh, <laughs> like you can get your gray options if you want to keep. Like there's the gray and the black option, the silver and the, and the space black. But it's also for the AirPod so, Pros. Yes, yes. Yeah. So for Micah Sargent, if you need a really green um, AirPod <laughs> beanie, you can get that now. And they're knit. Um, Look they're, and I, I just love this kind of stuff. This to me is the innovation that we've been missing for the last two decades at <laughs> Apple. AirPod beanies or toques as they're known north of the 49th parallel. You can get them yes, for $19.99 from Native. Union.com, although it looks like they're sold out right now. I blame Stephen Hackett. He was way too promotional then this morning. Oh, man. We only knitted 5,000. We didn't know. Oh, yeah. Micah's definitely going to want this yeah. screen. This is a can, beautiful can, yeah. can I say that? Can I say that I'm just happy to be living in a world in which this product sells out? <laughs> I would be disappointed <laughs> if it, this didn't sell out. Well, they've got all of the uh, all of the ladies at, uh, in the Newfoundland are knitting as fast as they can. <laughs> So that we will. And I'm sure it'll pop up all over Etsy. Like, I'm not telling you to go to Etsy for these, but I'm sure they're going to pop up all over Etsy. Yeah. Hey, Native places. Union, if you can't keep, too cute. keep them in stock, we're just going to have to go somewhere else. Uh, oh, wait a minute. You get four of them for $20. Yeah. Oh. oh. Well, you, you don't change your socks every day? Come on, man. Gla <laughs> day of the, you don't have day of the week AirPod socks, Leo? Glacier, peach, <laughs> indigo, and sage. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's get our pick of the week from uh, Mr. Uh, Andy Nako. Andy, uh, Monterey has some has fixed a couple of things about uh, windowing windowing management uh, on the Mac. It's still meaning that now if you have a Windows arrange and you actually go to sleep and then you wake it up again, you won't. Excuse me, when you did when you disconnect from a monitor and reconnect again, it doesn't just totally screw everything up. Okay, so that's a step in the right direction. It still doesn't have one of the most basic features that I always use whenever I'm using uh, Linux and and Android. Rectangle is, a, is is an app, free app. Go to rectangleapp.com that fixes this. All it does is if you drag the title bar of a window to the right end edge of the screen, it will resize it to take take up half the screen perfect if you uh, if you drag it to the top of the screen it'll resize it to do, do the full width of the screen perfect the top half and you, and yes there is there's actually a windows menu in the mac os that will do hey tile this to the left or the right half but it does something stupid it says oh you want to create an entirely new workspace that has this on one side and right. on the other just like on the ipad right wrong i just want to make some space it's to, just an arrangement like, folks it's just, it's just an arrangement i don't need exactly a, it's yeah it's the, yeah. It's the simplest it thing the in the world and yeah. mac doesn't do it so yep. uh, and so and it and it's also not as complicated as windows manage win, window managers on linux are where they'll often they, they started off with that in like 19 like 98 but then they said "Ooh, how about we do key binding so that if you want to tile all of the all of your emacs ones until uh 64 by 64 pixel mini went no Again, I drag it to the left, it's the left-hand side of the screen. <laughs> I drag it to the right, it's the right-hand side of the screen. It, 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 is one, it is one of the basic things I install on every single Mac, uh, almost like in the, first, in the first round of installations, because the first time that I drag a window and it doesn't happen, so, oh, rectangle app, download it. And it's free, nice. works great, it's very, very stable. Go ahead and get it. Open source. 
Ryan Hansen, nice job. Uh, I guess this leaves but you, Alex Lindsay, pick of the week. I hear nothing. You are muted. Sorry. Uh, I need to credit Jason Bache in our in our office hours group this morning. He kind of blew our minds with this with this app that I don't know how I didn't know it existed. But he brought it up. He was like, "This is a real." Someone was asking, "How do you screen capture? What's the best app to screen do screen captures on the Mac?" And he just said, "Well, you might want to try Screen to Layers." And we were all like, huh? "What are you what? what are you talking about? Screen to Layers?" And he goes, "Yeah, it's, it captures you know your screen in layers as a for PSD Photoshop." <laughs> For Photoshop, <laughs> and I and we were like, what? <laughs> and then and, and, and immediately everyone started downloading it, and everyone started playing with it, and 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 the, and and uh, we, it's it's as good as it sounds. So uh, it is, it, it's an incredible. Uh, so what it does is it will, you just hit screen capture, and it works for a second, and it literally captures a layer. Everything, but it captures your menu bar as a separate layer. It oh, they're all different your, layers. <gasps> the, you know, the, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. All of your inner, all, all of the windows that are opened, it captures those as layers. It captures the, just the icons on your screen. That's a layer. Like everything is a layer, you know, and it just, and it'll, and, um, and so it will, uh, it's, uh, that's it's impressive. That's pretty, uh, yeah. It's, that's, when that's I got to this, cool. needed, I, I literally had never heard of this company, Needed Apps. And they have the other one that I tested uh, because it, they have another one. It's called Web Delayers. Yeah, it does that with web web pages too. <laughs> so, oh, so it's M. Yeah, I guess you figured if once you figured out how to do it for uh, screens. Well, so a bunch of us have a lot of times we have to do animations where we're animating up a you know you're looking at a web page, like it's come you know and. Uh, that's usually what you do is you capture a piece of the web page, then you scroll down yeah. where there's a little overlap and you capture yeah. and then you go into Photoshop and you replace it and you talk about how smart you are because you use different different keys and everything else. This just does it. You just hit go and it just you get this long strip that that's that's all done. You know, it's all captured. Should and so, point out that you can use PSD files also with Acorn and Pixelmator. Yeah. Other and other and other Affinity. Programs. And Affinity, Affinity Photo. So, so you've got the layers. You don't have to have Photoshop. No, no. Yeah, absolutely. It just it just grabs all the layers. It's uh, oh my god! Yeah, yeah, like it was like it was. Oh my yeah. god! Is it? What's the cost? It looks like it's free. Like Eighteen dollars. Eighteen dollars. It's, like, it's worth. I think it. is what they recommend. But but I downloaded it. I'm using it right now for free. I downloaded it from the app store. I'm not sure exactly when I was supposed to pay for it, but I haven't paid for it yet. And I started testing it. And so I don't know how the payment structure works, but I know on their website it says it's like eighteen dollars. That's every penny. I mean, it's. Oh my god! It's, yes, brilliant. Uh, uh, it's brilliant. just brilliant. I mean, if you're doing training or you need to do anything where you do that, it's it's worth it. We, we spent all this time amazing. doing, oh, the little snip and cup capture oh area and stuff. Now you just got everything as a single yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Look at all the layers. Yeah. It really, yeah. there are quite yeah. a few layers in your, uh, oh, your yeah. screenshot there. Doc, yeah. Pip Agent, Pixelmator Pro, Finder, F Safari, yeah. Message. And they don't even have to worry about hiding themselves because they're a layer. So you don't yeah. need to turn that on. Nice. Oh, the people who need crazy. to write documentation will spend any amount of money to make right. this process simpler. Yeah. As, as, this as is... the author of like a dozen books, it's like the bane of my existence was always, oh, the damn screenshot. Oh, like, yeah. Damn, getting, so, setting the stage properly. Yeah. Oh, my God. This is, this is great. Yeah. How can it can do that because the way Apple, this must be something it's unique. It's drawing. Well, it's, just, it's just draw. It's, yeah, just. It's, Apple must somehow be communicating that each thing is because yeah, this, this is this is an app store it. app so it's it's within the sandbox i mean it's not doing anything it's not doing anything creative must have you know, something so to do with the screen rendering and on the, on the uh yeah the apple it's but it's grabbing all the, all the individual windows. windows wow yeah amazing i guess and, and yeah, I, uh, everything's like how did i not know this but existed? even the is the is the yeah. menu bar a window i guess it is it is it's a draw rect yeah. it's a region i guess it's a window it's, all right brilliant yeah Every platform should have this. That's so cool. I'm, Get I'm buying that right now. My my uh, I'm sad to say my new MacBook is sitting on my porch at home. <laughs> oh, oh, at least it's there. At least it's there. Oh yeah, it's it's safe. It's uh, in, the, in the but but in the before times we would complain about it being late or whatever. <laughs> now we're just happy it shows up. I'm just happy it's there. Yep. That's all I care about. <laughs> yep. I will be rushing, of course. Because I'm leaving uh, 7:30 a.m. from SFO tomorrow, I won't have time Gotta run those updates. I, well, I want to get it all set up, so I'm yep, going to recommend right. a couple of things that I use, and I've been preparing for this because I knew this would happen. Uh, homebrew is a must. Everybody who uses any command line stuff 
knows about Homebrew, which is a way to install Unix apps. But there is a feature of Homebrew, Homebrew Bundle, that will actually make a file, a bundle file. Uh, I can actually show you what mine looks like. It's a bundle file that contains not only everything you've installed in Homebrew, but if you install Mass, which is a, uh, a command line um, application installer, or you use Homebrew's uh, Cask feature, which installs um, uh, binaries, you actually will reinstall everything. It'll reinstall your Mac App Store stuff. It'll reinstall binaries. It'll reinstall everything. So my first step is to take my existing Mac. I don't want to just c connect the two together. First of all, it takes forever, right? And uh, and do this. I want to build it fresh. So this way I will download fresh. Let me just log in. Uh, sorry, I have to type in my uh, password so I can show you my brew file is what they call this. This is called a brew file. And I have it here. I keep it in... This is the other thing I do. I keep it in Notion. So all I have to do is log in uh, to Notion. And I have my system setups. So I do this in the browser because the browser is already working. And this is all the stuff. But my brew file, which is awesome, will automate this. Here's what, I'll make it bigger. So you tap the casks, you tap the fonts, and then it goes through. It'll use brew to install stuff, but it'll use mass to install, uh, brew cask to install uh, apps and mass to install stuff from the app store with the app store ID. So this in one step, it'll churn a bit, will download and completely update my system. And then, of course, uh, for settings, I use GitHub for my Emacs settings so I can copy those in quickly. And I also, for documents... I've been using that armor lock, that great encrypted hard drive, uh, and the uh, from uh, is that Western Digital, the armor lock. So I have on that, I have used uh, rsync to create my documents folder, all my other uh, uh, data folders, so that I can quickly whip those. Uh, they're always up to date using rsync. Another good tool is Unison, which does that as well, uh, and and that way, I'm going to be, I think, up and ready with a fully configured laptop. Bright and early, seven thirty tomorrow morning. Actually, yep. we have to drive down about four thirty, so oh. <laughs> it better it better work tonight. Um, anyway, that Our was something I explained on uh, on my um, uh, Mac uh, short little Mac show I used to do. Yeah, uh, and uh, it's real brew and brew bundle is really a useful thing for all of this. Yeah. Yeah. That, those are some great. Those are some great choices. Our, our sync is one of the. If, if there might be only about six command line things that everybody would benefit from learning, our sync is one of them. That there's so many things that I, I've, I'm in terms of making sure the two volumes are in sync with each other, backups, uh, remote restores, things like that. Where I think that oh damn, what 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 app do I need to download or do I need to use for this? Oh, I can probably just do this with our sync. It's 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 even it's how fantastic. I keep my my music yeah. library synced to my Walkman. It's like just yeah. one our sync command and it will just absolutely just do everything perfect yeah once you learn how to it's a command line utility but once you learn how to um uh do it i, I don't even i just type it in now very quickly yeah, exactly yeah there is a uh, interesting file synchronization tool called unison which is open source and free it's from a, i think a university i think pittsburgh your old stomping grounds uh that works on os 10 um that will also do this but I think rsync. If you know rsync's command lines, you're 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 pretty good. So I'm ready. I'm, I've been preparing my <laughs> my Emacs. I've been slowly making sure everything is up to date. I put it all on my GitHub page so I can sync it. I put all my dot files on my GitHub page so I can sync them. It's a three-step so process. You can code on vacation. Yeah, as one does. just so I, <laughs> you know, I could take the old M1 on vacation, but the old M1. The old the M1. Hotness. Yeah, I got the new hotness. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are done. Hey, thank you, everybody, for a great show. I knew we had a lot to talk about. I'm glad Rene Ritchie came back from his briefings laden with hey. information. You can get more. He's posting it all on YouTube, youtube.com slash Rene Ritchie. Is the next video going to be the uh, conversation with Gruber? I have two coming up. I'm trying to get them both up as soon as I can. One is talking to John Gruber about uh, Monterey, and the other is talking to someone familiar with everybody here, Alex Lindsay, about ProRes. Oh, nice. Because I needed someone who was super smart about ProRes who didn't work at Apple uh, or, you know. <laughs> I bet he'll have a really good camera. And, and he ended up with me somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I bet his picture will be excellent. 
it yes. was gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, you shot it in 24K and downsampled it for me. Renee's uh, M1 Max MacBook Pro review is really, really uh, good. Uh, you, we showed you a little clip where he's showing all the different cameras and so forth. It really is great. AirPods 3 review is up as well. Y if you are uh, listening to this show, I'm sure by now you subscribe to uh, YouTube. Renee Ritchie. 290,000 subscribers. We should really get that to a million. YouTube.com nice. slash Renee oh, thank Richie. Thank you for being here, Renee. Andy and Akko, when are you going to be on WGBH in Boston next? Uh, a day early this week because I'm traveling uh, Thursday at 1230 in the afternoon Eastern time. You can stream it live or stream it later. Just go to WGBHnews.org. And where are you going? Remind me. I'm going to New York City. First trip back to the Metropolitan Opera since pre-COVID. Uh, I've I have one I have one more thing to finish for my Metropolitan Opera audience costume. Uh, I have some paint. I, I did the primer coat yesterday. I have to do the finish coat today. Uh, it's really coming together. I'm, I I look forward to either I look forward to possibly being thrown out for good or being asked politely to leave for, just for this one day. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Halloween weekend. You're, You're going to share pictures, on, on, right? I'm going to share pictures. I don't. I, I didn't want to share anything. I have a couple of like little teasers on my Instagram uh, that a couple of people have already guessed what it is. Uh, but it's it it is it, it's not like a it's not like a full like uh, Comic Con costume. It's like how do I reinterpret this so that it looks like what someone would wear like to to the Metropolitan Opera? And there, there are a lot of things I had to switch in and oh, out. A lot of changes boy. I had to make at last second. Oh so boy! I'm, I was going to really ask you: Are you uh, a person from another era, or are you a superhero? I think it leans a little more toward the latter. I'm guessing. I'm it, well. It's from it's from it's a historical figure, and from it's from a, long, a galaxy far, far away, a long time ago. All <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, and people have already guessed from those two clues. I'm impressed. The Your second one more than the you. first one, but yeah, yeah the, the, no, no, no. Again, I, I. Believe me, I, I, I want. I'm trying to hire Rumslag to make an appearance at the in, the, in Act Two because <laughs> Tur Tur Turandot is a very is a highly problematic opera, and I really think that Rumslag needs to come in and clean house. When you start yeah, seeing exactly. tweets from the Metropolitan Opera about that weirdo in the fifth row, <laughs> exactly, you'll know who it is. <laughs> Have fun, Andy. Have a great time. I will not be oh, here I next do. week, by the way, uh, oh. so I won't get to find out how it went. In fact, I won't be here for two weeks because no i'll be here a week from wednesday okay good no a week from tuesday i will not be here next tuesday i'll be back in two weeks okay thank you for explaining that <laughs> i had to find out exactly alex Lindsay, what's going on at office hours global oh you know it's always cooking you know we uh yesterday we we had this incredible breakdown and by the way if you, you should go back and if you're listening to this Look at yesterday's Mondays. Um, we had uh, Richard Lavery uh, from Belfast did a breakdown of how he does virtual events. And not only is it a great breakdown, but it, it actually is um, an incredible use of Keynote. Like he just really had all oh, the magic nice. moves and everything else going on. And, yeah. and so, so anyway, so he, uh, he did a great job there. Um, the, uh, uh, today we talked, we, today we just said, Hey, let's talk about troubleshooting audio. And it was an incredible technical hour of us talking about that. Um, you know, t uh, on Friday we have the company, uh, universe that builds these automation tools for hardware and software. They're going to come on and talk about what their product does. And then of course we've got education and cooking and concerts on Saturday. So Saturday's the long day. There's all kinds of stuff going on. So it's, um, it's, it's still busy it gets busier every, and, and today, this week we're starting the soft move to off what we call office hours 2.0, which is that it's going to look more and more like a broadcast. So, um, uh, so instead of looking as much like Zoom as it does now, we're, we've built all these tools that let us literally in the web interface, all the super sources and everything else are getting built programmatically. So when we, when I click on the, I'm going to have these four people answer the question, it builds a super source automatically and sends it, sends it out. And we're going to start, so tomorrow is actually the first raw stream. We're not going to publicize it. Just the members get to watch it for a week or two. And then, um, but, but it's going to look more and more like a show, but it's a lot of, uh, automated tools so that cool. the the person cutting doesn't have to like actually know how to use a switcher. They just they need to push the buttons that they want to 
show. So it's we're pretty excited about it. Coincidentally, Super Source is also the name of the character Andy Nock will be playing at the opera uh, this week. So. <laughs> Lots of screens. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we do we Mac can greet one hour beforehand. Hundred bucks for the VIP package. It includes one signed photo with one photo. <laughs> we do Mac Break Weekly Tuesdays, eleven a.m. Pacific, two p.m. Eastern Time, eighteen hundred UTC. Although, remember. In the United States, we like to delay uh, the uh, change from daylight saving time to standard time until after Halloween. So next week, many of you will have changed your time. We will not have, but uh, we do change uh, November 7th. So uh, it's 1800 UTC for now. It'll be, what does that mean? I don't know what it means. 1900? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll explain later. It's either 19 or 17. I know one of, I think it's minus eight. So I think it's 19 now. Uh, <laughs> it'll be 19 starting uh, November 9th. Okay. Okay. Which is when I'll ironically be back. We uh, also uh, offer a uh, uh, live stream of it if you want to watch at those times. Uh, if you go to twit.tv slash live, there's audio or video. Chat with us at irc.twit.tv. That's open to all. Of course, Discord is available to those of you who are members of Club Twit. $7 a month gets you ad-free versions of all of our shows, plus access to the discourse and special Discord and special programming. You can find out more about that at twit.tv slash club twit. Uh, after the fact, on-demand versions of all the shows available at our website, twit.tv slash mbw. There's also a dedicated client, I'm sorry, dedicated channel uh, for uh, the show on YouTube. Uh, all of our shows have their own YouTube channel, so you can watch there as well. I think my favorite way to get a podcast, I, I suspect it's yours as well, is to subscribe in Apple's podcast or some other podcast player. If you do that, uh, you'll get the show automatically the minute it's available. If you will, leave us a five-star review. Let the world know. You, too, listen to Mac Break Weekly. Thanks, everybody. I'm off to Mexico. I'll be off next week, uh, back the following Tuesday. But meanwhile, you have to get back to work because break time is over. Bye-bye. Hey, you don't have to wait till the weekend to get the tech news you need. Join Jason Howell and myself, Micah Sargent, for Tech News Weekly, where we talk to and about the people making and breaking the tech news.